awesome morning here. Christian, I don't know. It's still got some here. Anyway, hello everyone. So we got Christian, obviously, Willem, Firehouse, David, Dave, Fred. Mind you, I've still got some here, but it's not much of it left here. Look, look how thin that's getting. Old, getting old. Sucks. I think my camera shifted a bit. I should be that way a bit more. I should be like that. My upload just finished. I, I just uploading a video and it, it finished as I was putting the live stream to start. It finished just in time. So hopefully it behaves alright. Illuminator. Uh, how's it going? I'm sure trying to wake up. It's been a weird morning this morning. Trying to get going. Uh, so, I've got some new test gear to play with. Well, a couple of new items to play with, I should say. One's a piece of test gear, one's not. Well, I suppose it kind of is. Um, hey, Danish. There, yeah, so um, let's see. We've got a few things to play with. We could do some Suzuki board assembly as power supply builds. We could do. We've got two of them. We've got the Heathkit IT28 to refurb, and we've got two bits of gear which just arrived yesterday, which I also need to do videos about as well. So I've got a few things to work on. Um, East Power Engineering, how's it going? So we've got a second Heathkit device, which has arrived yesterday, and a Valhalla, which arrived yesterday. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Christian. You're pushing your luck, man. <laughs> uh, my wife actually likes me having my hair about mm, that long. I prefer it, you know. But then it sticks up even more. It's like, mm, no, it's just. I prefer it shorter. In fact, I think it's probably a bit long now. I probably should cut it. Linus had an issue with a test with a um, manufacturer because of um, like the firmware updates. Really, ten thousand dollars. Jeez. DIY hairdo. Actually, that's true. It is a DIY hairdo. I do cut my own hair. Does it show? Black tea, no, it's just coffee. I don't like any like I I drink tea but not as like I don't drink any like iced coffees or any herbal teas or anything like that. I just plain I actually like cheap tea. I don't like expensive tea, strangely, I like cheap tea. I don't know why. <laughs> cheap taste. Oh. Hey Ian, he just finished the piece of bees and had to wind and dine with wife. Nice. I saw your post about component issues giving you trouble and you'd redesigned a PDVST mini board to improve it a little bit. Slightly less noise. I don't think I could even measure that noise in my gear, could I? I'm, I'm, none of my gear is precision. 
I don't think any of my gear has got the precision needed to measure that noise. I think I've got enough. I don't know, maybe. I don't know, I've never tried. I need an eight and a half digit multimeter, I think. I've only got seven and a half. Okay, I've got two of them, but. Yeah. Does that make 12? No, 15. I can't even do maths this morning. That's not a great start. Anyway, so we've got a few things we can do today once I finish my coffee and wake up properly. <laughs> so I really need to do it, you know, I know you do it a lot, is playing around with the um, GPIB stuff. I mean, I did some of that before, didn't I? I've got those... I've lost them. Um, yeah, somewhere I've got some GPIB units, which I were sitting here. Where did I put them? Um. <laughs> Might put them out in the other lab to get them out of the way whilst cleaning up. Believe it or not, I've cleaned up at some point. Um, hey, Chris. Spent all day soldering things badly, <laughs> and tweaking 198 kilohertz off air frequency standard. Right. You're almost asleep. It's not 11 o'clock. Yeah. Trouble with this whole international time thing, everyone should be on the same time. It should be like the same time everywhere. My time. And just make it so much simpler. Of course, you'll have to be, you know, working night shift, but you know, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. Anyway, we've got a few things to work with. So we've got, as I said before, we've got the we can make some power supplies, do some like building some kit stuff. We could do those. That shouldn't take that long. Actually, could do probably do everything. Actually, be able to do those. We can look at refurbishing the IT twenty eight capacitance tester. With Johnny, I don't know where is Johnny. He's a bit late. Um, and we've got this new bit to get. Shall I tell you what these things are? You had a JPC slightly less. Um, I'm trying to remember now. Is that was that one on some as same as mine, wasn't it? Is that what I'm thinking of? I'm trying to think now. Is that one? I'm, I'm trying to bloody remember what your video was now. Um, uh, Andrew, how's it going? The Yeah, that's right. It was basically the same as mine. Mine's a clone of the JBC. Mine's that Jabe UD 1200. And I've been really happy with mine. I think it's really good. I had a few things I'd tweak on it because I wasn't completely happy with it. Um, like the power switch on the back was wider backwards. Well, I think it's installed backwards actually, so the illumination was on all the time rather than only on when it's powered up. Um, the neon indicator. Fixed that and fan. Was so it the fan? I did a couple of things with it. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it wasn't much. I guess I had the same problem with you with the um, used pieces sticking up. But this one doesn't actually have a holder on it. So what I actually do is I leave a couple in that little tray you used to get the pits in and out of. I leave a couple sitting in there. Um, and also I stick some down the side of the iron holder. So between the body of the iron... So between the body of the station and the iron holder piece, it can actually there's a gap down there. So I just slot tips in there. Um, and I could actually show you this, couldn't I, rather than just trying to describe it, because you know I do have cameras and shit here, don't I? You can get to see how messy my disc is. What's what? 
thing all warms up and wakes up. Give me a second, I shall show you. Let's change views. And it's not working because I've got it plugged in. Hold on. We can fix this. There we go. All right. And you probably want some lights so you can see too. So you can see I've got it here. So I've got some tips down the side here, just down there. And I've got these other ones stick up the top. Now what you can see I've got here is one of them has got one of these pieces on the end of it. Which come with these I don't know, cheap Chinese bloody things. But I don't know if the JBC's got the same thing. I just leave that on one of them. That means I don't stab myself in the arm when I put my hand over. And they both just sit there just fine like that. But yeah, exactly the same issues you had. Someone thought it's enough? Okay. Yeah, I need to actually play with that GPIB stuff and play with logging some more and um, get all that sort of stuff done. Turn this back off again. I do actually want to do that. Hey Grant, how's it going? Uh, here or to you. Hey Harold. Cut your hand to reach for a power switch, yeah. Yeah. Which is why I've got that little cap on the end there. So if I'm gonna hit something, I'm gonna hit the cap and it'll remind me, hey, lift my arm a bit more. <laughs> it's not a good design, is it, in that way? Yeah, mine doesn't even have the tip holder on it like yours has got. So I think yours might actually be slightly worse because they will stick higher, I think. Not sure. Dunno. I really wish the power switch was on the front. I actually almost moved the power switch on mine actually. I was looking at it. Um, Era 6. Um, turn off. Make sure that when you're doing self tests on it, you set the switch on the front for the resistance to two wire. Because it has to be on two wire for it to pass the self test, not four wire. So make sure you watch out for that particular aspect. It's a bit of a gotcha, that one. Um, have you got the electronic manuals for it? Which one is it? You never did tell me. You thought it was the um, 1061. Is that what it actually is? Any problems getting stuff? Yeah. I've had a few things go missing. Um, most I'm getting is delays. So, um, yeah, I've had a few problems with things. I've bought something from eBay, disappeared, that kind of thing, you know, so, oh, great. It's an expensive thing, too. It happens, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, at least to get refunds for that. Um... Yeah, it is a 1061. So I have electronic and physical manuals for the 1061. I think they've actually got two manuals for the 1061. Different versions. One is for the 1062 as well. One's just the 1061 only. One's the 1062 as well. Because 1062 is very similar. Um, so if you need a physical manual, I can send you one. I do have a spare manual, I'm pretty sure. I'm just looking now. It's up there on the shelf. Um, oh, thanks a lot, Grant. Much appreciated. Two pounds. And Andrew, yes, loading electronics for Guinness Reads. Great. Um, I'm trying to sort of keep them as simple as I can to allow for beginners, right? Which is the whole purpose of it. So I may be missing a lot of information there, which a bit more, which should be a bit more in depth things like that. I mean, I'm not an expert. I'm not professionally trained. Like that. I am self-taught. 
I just enjoy electronics. So I've taught myself a lot over the years. So I'm just trying to convey some of those things. But the hard bit is trying to remember what people don't know. So it's not about, you know, I'll teach something and I'll try and explain about something and I'll forget some of these principles may not be known by the person. I'll just, like, skip over things and I'll think, oh, that's what I should have probably covered that. So it's that's the hard bit of trying to do these videos is trying to remember what to include without making any assumptions about what people may or may not know. Um, yeah. Um... Oh, see, it's a Vox rig. Oh, that's the part you have a problem, is it? Mmm. You're peeing me. Okay, no worries. Heading over there. Okay, no worries. I'll catch you later, Grant. Thanks for dropping by. Microchips, how's it going? Yeah, so, um... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's well overdue. I think I should have done this kind of video series a long time ago. Um, I'm getting lots of positive comments from it. That shows that I'm obviously targeting the right kind of area there and trying to cover things quite nicely. Um, trying to. But choosing the topics, obviously, I've, I've tried to just chip, pick random things I could think of. But it may be things that's come up from people you know, suggesting things. I think there have been a couple of suggestions. Yeah, well, I'm a I'm a component level repair person, so you know I I pull things apart and try and find the part which is bad, not just board swap. I mean, they both got their place. You know, if it's an like a industrial situation, don't be wasting time trying to find which component has gone. You just want to drop a new bolt in and get going. And a lot of places are like that because it's about time. The time is worth more than the board, and so it's not worth the time um, messing around trying to find an individual part, which could be bad. And you may spend a week doing that. Um, whereas you could just drop a new board in five minutes later, you're back out again. You know, industrial uses are, well, commercial uses, I should say, um, is a justification for board swapping. You swap out boards here. Yeah. yeah. It's got its place. Like I say, you know, sometimes it's about time. You know, it's about time management and getting the thing going quick. For me, I don't care if it's going quickly or not. I just want to fix it. <laughs> you know, that's, that's to me the fun is is narrowing down and tracking down where the fault is and trying to figure out what's going on. You got an LG twenty seven. Display is missing about a quarter on the bottom of the screen. Oh, that's not good. That's probably the panel, or at least the um, hot bar attachment for the ribbon which goes onto the panel. It's likely gone. Unlikely to be a driver, it's usually the flex cable that goes to the board, goes to the screen itself. So, sorry, that's probably gone. You might be able to get a soldering iron if you can put it all apart. You might, you might be able to get in there and just run a soldering iron not too hot along the back. And... Um, Maybe re glue it, maybe if you're lucky, but I don't like your chances to be honest. Depends on how they're constructed. I mean, I'm, it probably isn't even done that way anymore. I don't even, when it comes to panels, I don't bother looking. Um. Old views of old version of Pulse View. Uh, can't help but not familiar with that one. Maybe someone else here can comment on that. <coughs> yeah, I mean, for me, fixing stuff is about I don't know the challenge of fixing it, and at the end of the day, I'll be able to get a better piece of equipment than I could have otherwise owned, um, at least for the money, you know. So I'll get myself a better deal. And it may cost me a hundred or two hundred dollars to fix it sometimes, um, but sometimes it's still cheaper than 
not buying a broken one. So, you know, a great example is my calibrator here, right? You know, I paid, uh, what was that, $2,500 US, I think it was, for that. Broken. I think I spent about $200 on parts. And it's now worth at least twice that. Two and a half times that. Three times that, even. I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah. That's a great example. That's probably the best win I've had so far. That one. I use it a lot. It's really good. Rubbish with displays. Can't even line zebra strips most of the time. Yeah. I was actually working on something right now. I've, I've been recording some video on it. I'm waiting for some parts, but actually I've got to order them yet. I've ordered them, but haven't paid for them yet. Well, I was, um, I've been using those. Using those. I've done videos in the past about those farm tech timers, sports timers things. And I've been given one to fix because the displays are naked on it. And I've been diagnosing that. It had water, in, uh, had corrosion inside. It had water go into it, so it's all corroded inside in various spots, not a bad corrosion, just a little bit of surface corrosion. So I cleaned all that up. And there's some corrosion on the L C D driver I see. So I lifted the IC off, it's a bloody Q QFN package. Um lifted it off, cleaned up the corrosion, put it back on again. Still bad display. Um and I was able to test the outputs onto the L C D. So the L C D uses A C, not D C. So you have to measure that and I found when it's showing a display of 0 0.000, which is a standard display, that's 25 segments that should be turned on. And so I was able to measure 25 AC signals going to the LCD, because I don't know which, what the pinout is, no idea. But I could find 25 AC signals going to it. So that corresponds to 25 segments. So it's trying to power it, and it had four segments that were out. So I knew, okay, definitely got an issue there with that so um, yeah I managed to track it down to the display so actually <laughs> I actually heated up the display just where the because it's got um, fingers like standard pins like an IC pins on the edges of the display right? so you, just, you can plug it into headers <clears throat> and I heated up the edges of the LCD where those metal fingers were clamped on and the, the, the digits came back so the, the segments which were missing they came back on um, and when it cooled down again, it went away. So it's bad, obviously bad connections with those fingers going to the LCD. So um, I don't want to do anything else with that until I've got parts. Because if I can get parts, then I might be able to fix the screen. But what, uh, if I break it, then um, at least it doesn't matter because I've got a replacement. If I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not even bother. I mean, this, so replacing the LCD wasn't that expensive, so. Um, wasn't too bad. Um. Hey Kiro, how's it going? Yeah. Anyway. So I've been working really hard this week trying to get videos out and I did a couple of days I didn't actually do any videos. I didn't record anything, didn't edit anything. I just didn't get a chance. But the fact I've been doing two a day, all the other days, um, means I've still ahead. So I've got three videos uploaded waiting to go. One's a mailbag. Was it four videos? Might be four videos actually. I uploaded another one this morning. Got mailbag for tomorrow. And I've got, yeah, I've got four videos up there. I've got two beginner series and a review video for Wednesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday. And I've got 10 videos queued up, ready to go on here for the beginner series and one more review already to go as well. So I've got 11 videos which are done, waiting to go up. So basically, it's uh, just 15 videos. So I'm two weeks ahead of everything I've got to do. So that's good. Let's hope it stays that way. The idea is that then when I get to more complex videos, I can spend a couple of days doing them. And 
give me some more time. I don't have to stress about trying to achieve them. That way, I can gradually fall backwards as well without worrying about it. So, yeah. Um, what I originally wanted to do is actually do all these videos, have the whole series done, and then start uploading them. But I'm impatient sometimes, and I thought, oh, no, I've done, I'll, I'll just start doing it now. <laughs> Anyway. You got five HP logic analyzers. Do you need five? Really? I thought I was bad. Um well the videos I'm doing because of these are the beginner series ones, they are Basically, me sitting down at a desk and waffling, right? So there's much less required, much less time effort required to actually generate them, right? So part of it is that they're trying to be short videos, trying to keep them short as I can, and try and talk about the things I need to cover. And I'm just using a bit of papers you may have seen. I'm using a bit of paper and drawing stuff down on it and putting some overlays on the screen, stuff like that, and maybe doing some demos and a few of them. <clears throat> well, I think a demonstration is helpful. So those take a bit more time, but. I can record a couple of videos in an hour. Alright, put it in perspective. An hour, maybe two hours, I'm going to record two videos. Then it's twice the time it takes to record them is how long it takes me to edit them. Two to three times longer. So, if I can do two videos in an hour, I might take me three hours to edit. That gives me four hours to, to get two videos done, basically. Let's say that's roughly right. <clears throat> Um, it depends, you know, it varies a bit. Um, doesn't matter about how many capacitors in it's got. It might. You might be able to get excited. <laughs> I've had capacitors arriving. I've had some just dripping through, so, yeah. I don't, know. I don't understand the fascination capacitors. I don't know, it's just, they're just caps. Anyway. Uh, isn't that a given for Scott? Yeah, well, almost, isn't it? I, I use a lot of caps, so. Although, I've got quite a big stock of them now, so I'll get to the point where I can't fit any more in my drawers, so I'll sort of have to be careful about getting any more, unless I actually need them. Of, you've got to teach one cut others as well. Haven't used them in years. I mean, I've got two MSO oscilloscopes with logic analyzer built in. I've also got the, I'm trying to think of the name, Zero Plus branded logic analyzer. And I do actually have another one which I sold. It's like a 40 channel logic analyzer with all these different probes and stuff with it. So I did a review on it. I don't know three years ago, four years ago probably, probably four years ago, and it's this big box of all these accessories and these cables and there's all these probe tips and there's heads and it's like, wow, and I end up selling that because that, that's actually worth a few grand, that thing, and I'm selling it early in the year, um, so that's, but I didn't need it, you see, because I already got two MSI scopes and I also had the other Zero Plus um, logic analyzer as well. Which is much smaller. And I don't use them very often. I mean, they come in handy. A lot of times I'm actually using the analog inputs on the scopes and turning on serial decoding. That's usually what I'm doing. <laughs> That's most of it. Um, yeah, anyway. Catch up with the chat. Maybe I'll buy some condensers, Fred. Yeah, I need to buy some condensers. Not these capacitor rubbish, no. The condensers. TLA 704? What's the TLA 704? Hey, can you use that again? Okay, well, I need to look up a TLA 704 now. Now, you've got to be curious. I hate it when people shove model numbers and things because I actually don't hate it. But it makes me go looking for them and find out what they are. Oh, okay. Right. 
That's nice. That's very nice, actually. Windows based. Hmm. Well, Chris, there's some posts on the uh, EV blog forum, it seems. <laughs> this gap is a thing on there. Hold on. Apparently, something on eBay, too. Actually, it's surprisingly cheap. Shipping's not, though. $3,000 shipping. <laughs> there goes the cheap aspect. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, not cheap. Maiden Jar, yeah, I suppose it's a yeah, early capacity, isn't it? Mm. How do you pronounce that name? Lao Man Pure? Ma Ma Lao Man Pure? I don't know, oh, sorry, I'm going to mangle your name. I'm going to call you LM, alright? <laughs> Um, but you see him watching, cool. Thanks, Q's. Yeah, I'm just trying to cover what I can with those, you know, like the actual things I think beginners need to know, but. I'm sure I'm missing stuff, but um, yeah. Oh, Dallas things, eh? So the I've got some here somewhere. There's a guy which I was dealing with who was re refurbishing and re re repairing a WaveTech. I can't believe it was now. Signal generator, some kind. Waveform generator. And he had lots of issues. He did a thread on the EV block forum about it. And he's in New Zealand. And um, he actually borrowed my EEPROM programmer to program some EEPROMs. And. The he had some Dallas memory modules in there, and he actually replaced those with some one-time programmable chips. And he sent me some bits. He sent me the, the he sent me the Dallas memory modules because he wanted me to get the data off them. Um, hey Johnny, how's it And um, and so I read the mon the mon I can't say. I read the modules. I read the contents of the modules off. They weren't dead yet, but they were, you know, you never know with these things. Then he put that information on the um, other devices he was going to use on, on it. So he did a fit on EV block form about it, about a wave tech thing. Um, I can't remember the model number though, which isn't going to be very helpful. He was doing a repair on it. And I can't remember the guy's name. Found a scope adapter logic analyzer. Haven't seen it. Did I see the sweet moon phase light? No, haven't seen that. A skilled Heiko, Eco, Heiko. That's again. Yeah. Oh, anyway. This one. Right. I'm going to click on the link. 
<laughs> Let's find out what Johnny's talking about. I didn't see it. Go on Twitter. Open up. Right. Okay. Right, so you, is that okay? Right, I see what you've done. Okay, no worries. Looks pretty cool. I do own a set of Probe Masters now, thanks to one of my Patreon supporters who sent me a little gift pack the other day. Took two months to arrive, but it got here. <laughs> um, so yes, I do own some now. Haven't used them much yet, though. I've only sort of looked at them a little bit. I haven't actually had the opportunity to use them yet. Because I've already got some really nice probes from um, Pomona that sent me to do reviews on. So those are really nice ones. So. Those are like my normal go-to probes. I've got a different type of probe on different meters, so I'll just grab it. If you want a different kind of probe, I'll just grab a different meter instead of changing probes around. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm missing chat. Let's see what I missed stuff. What have I missed? I oh, and D caps, hard to tell their values. There's no markings here. Yeah, you can't find out the cap values. You know, usually, if the cap isn't bad, you could take it off and measure it. Um, if the cap is bad, take a best guess based on size. Um, there's, you know, unless you can get schematic diagrams for them, then just take a guess. Because a lot of times it's not that critical. You just need something. Um, sometimes it doesn't need to be there. Oh, we can just take it off. Like you have one which is blown and you know short it out and take it off, replace it with something, um, something about the same size. It might be about the same value if you're lucky. But um, yeah, it's it's a guessing game really. You can't really tell unless you can measure it. You're late due to streaming on Twitch. All oh, right. Got two terabyte drive. One's gone short. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can probably just take the thing off and just put a, some kind of cap on there. It might be fine. Usually the vendors aren't that critical. Depends what it's doing. You know. No cap is better than a shorter cap. Where's the kitty? Uh, they've been fed, so they're out somewhere outside, probably. I don't know. They're probably laying in the sun somewhere. Anyway, yes. So, we should work on something instead of waffling. Let's do something. So, I need to do a poll. Let's do a poll. What are we going to work on today? This poll thing's always really slow to update in this thing. I don't know, it takes ages. Wow, really slow.
Well, maybe options not connected to this. I've been dropping frames today, which is interesting. I've dropped 158 frames so far. Um, this is a bit of a spoiler alert here. You might be seeing this for a few weeks. I think I'm, yeah, probably three or four weeks away. Before you see this thing on the video and it just arrived and I've, it's a bit of a distance off before I get to even publishing them you know, working on them might work on them today and uh, what the hell is it called everything in It was a big glitch a few minutes ago, was there really? Maybe it is it. No, I thought you put it still there. It's behind them. It's still there. Hey, Hemby, how's it going? How are we looking so far? God, this thing's really slow to update. So 12 volts so far. Volts. The boats. There's no L in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Chris disappeared, did he? Oh. Okay. Well, the um, yeah, the printer's still there. So it's, it, you can't see it, unfortunately, because yeah, it's it is there. It's I've got two. I've got like a um, filing cabinet one side, which is all the this gear is stacked on top of, and then next to that I've got like a set of drawers, and that's what the printer's on. So it's just been obscured by the test gear stack. Which is going to get bigger eventually. I'm worried about the, the file cabinet they're breaking actually because it's only made from wood, or well, chipboard most likely, and um, I'm a bit worried about actually breaking the top of the thing out with too much weight. It's a worry. I might actually have to put like a board across it or something. You don't need those things are okay. The IT28 is a capacitor tester, so it's an old Heathkit device. Um, the power supplies are. I've got two power supply kits to build. One is from this curve tracer, which I've had sitting here for a year. <coughs> and that's like a plus or minus 15 volt power supply board. And I've got the power supply board for the um, Retro Chip Tester Pro, which is like a plug in board for that. So I've got to build that as well. Um, the IT7400 is a IC tester from Heathkit, which just arrived yesterday, which is behind me. Yeah. 
this beastie just here, manual IC tester. Thought it'd be a pretty cool thing to look at. And the Valhalla 2500EP is a voltage to current converter. So you can put in, in this case, up to two volts, um, AC or DC, and it'll output an AC or DC current of up to about 12 amps, I think it is. And it's got various ranges on it. And apparently it's not working right. So I haven't even powered up yet. I've got it yesterday. I haven't been powered. Um, it might go bang. I don't know. I've already changed voltages over on it, but um, I don't know what issues with that one yet. That that's going to be in the stack when it's done. That'll be my high current. I can't say that'll be my high current test source for multimeters. So that's the plan. Okay, catch up with chat. Chris had wife had grow. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Could be he wants to go for P, who knows. <laughs> yeah, I've still got some room to stack some more stuff, so the ceiling's quite high in this room. It's actually a very high ceiling. Um so it's not a big clive where he's almost touching it. Mine is uh, I don't know, probably about three meters to the top, I don't know. Something like that. It's really high. It's like a vaulted ceiling sloping. So um it's lots of room. I mean I'll give you a clue. There it is up there. A bunch of stuff stuck up there. Anyway. You get the idea. Running out of space, yeah, I've, I've run out of space ages ago. <laughs> That's why I've got two labs. I've got a second lab out there. I've got two. Because I don't have enough room in this room for everything I own. It's out there as well. Because I, I was going to fit it in here. There's no way. I'd like to. In fact, if I... <clears throat> if my wife wasn't sharing this office with me, then I could actually take that space and I could fit my stuff in it but it's a shared office you know she she needs a space too it's fine so that's her little corner over there that's like the corner she's she's squeezed into to make space for the stuff I need in this room so she doesn't get much space as it is and sometimes I even sort of leak into her a little bit when she's not using it um, this bought a new oscilloscope what scope did you buy? My background, I'm not self taught. You got the Siglant SDS 1202XC, yeah, that's fine, nothing with that. That's actually hackable. Oh, actually, no, you got the 1200, no, it's not hackable, it's already fully scoped, it's fully out there. So if you got the 1102, you could have actually expanded it to a 1200 with this. Slight hank, but you can unlock all the options, stuff like that. You can do that. There's the information in the EV blog form how to do that. It's a good enough scope, it's perfectly fine. Siglance makes reasonable stuff, you know. Um, it's better than things like um, Must Tool or, or the other like budget brands. I mean, they are slightly more expensive, obviously, but they're, they're reasonable. They're right. I mean, I've got a few Siglance scopes, I'm happy with them. Looks like an accident won't happen, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your heavy duty electric height adjustable workbench buckled under the weight. Yeah. I don't like these adjustable benches, these height ones. I just I just think they're an accident won't happen too, so yeah. Handtech, yeah, I see how I'm thinking of. Yeah, Handtech is budget. I've done reviews on Handtechs, Must Tools, and Sealance, so you probably see my review videos. If you haven't gone over, look at them once I finish the stream. Um, I've got a few reviews. I've actually done the SDS 1200, I think. Is it that one or the 1100? Um, I've done 
that scope. I've actually reviewed it. Is my wife technical? No, but she's clever. Um. But where I got this last year, my poster died after six months. That's not very good. I don't know if there's any issues with them. Um, probably the best place to find out is to look at the EV blog forum and have a look through there. Um, I'm sure if there's issues, people would have been posting about them. you got the PM3217. Chris has got a Philips scope as well. I don't know if he's still got it. I know he had one. He might have got rid of it, actually. I know he had a, a, a Philips scope. They look quite nice, actually, those ones. Connecting log between the connecting rod between the two legs. Yeah, things aren't built as well as you think they are. Eh? Modern stuff isn't built that well. Yeah, so you can do some nice stuff. They're actually doing some higher end stuff now as well. They're actually getting to more expensive equipment and like more professional grade sort of stuff, like high end. I know they're doing some really nice stuff now. Um, like. Last year I won a signal scope. They're doing a contest, contest, a contest, and I actually won a scope, which was then quite a good one. Um, it still is available as a good one. It's the STS two thousand X plus. Um, because I all my review videos I did, I submitted those for the entries into the reviews, and because I've done so many signal reviews, my chances are quite good, <laughs> and I won it. Um, so that's good, but um, they've got some like 6,000 series now, 5,000 series that they're really up there. So they're, they're, they're not really like the budget brand anymore. They're, they've obviously been learning as they go along. I mean, they're not the best brand. It's not, it's not like Keysight, but they're still very good and they're getting better all the time. Good scope under $100,000. I'm not familiar with other brands too much. I mean, I'm familiar with the signals. I know the Keysight a little bit, like the DSOX 1102G is the one I've got. They've got that new version now, which is now black. Um, drop a 720, did it? Yeah, I've dropped some frames. Interesting. Um, hmm. I might drop my bit right down slightly. Just slightly. Um, give me a second. And I mean, I've been happy with the Sigilant so I think they're good. All brands have their pros and cons. Like I've got three scopes set up on my desk, three, because I've got the Sigilant two thousand X Plus, which I've improved slightly. Um, that's now like a five hundred megahertz scope. <clears throat> I've got the Sigilant STS one one zero two. So one when I four, got a four channel version, um, which I've also improved to be two hundred megahertz. And I've got the key site DSOX one when I two G, which I've also improved to be two hundred megahertz. And I've got them all there, but the main reason I've got three different scopes is that they've got slight differences between them. I mean the four channel one, the uh one thousand series, I probably don't really need that. I could probably move that and just take it off desk and Use that as a portable one to, you know, when I'm working on things over here or something. Um, it'd be handy for that. I don't really need that one there. Um, but the key site and the Sigilant, I've got things like different serial decoding. De decoding is very slightly different between them, especially in like ASCII decoding. The way it decodes is very slightly different. They're not wrong, they're just different. Um, the key site will display like keyboard um, information, like a shift key. It will display it as a shift, whereas the signal will display it as the raw data, you know, the actual key code. So they display things a little bit differently. So sometimes it's more useful to have the key site, sometimes more useful to have the signal. They've both got the pros and cons. Um, the key site has got a faster user interface than the um, 1000 series, but the 2000 series is just as quick as the key site. So it's like, yeah, it's, you know, we'll swear they're improving stuff all the time. But, um, 
There's not much in it though. I mean, it's just very slightly faster on the key side compared to the 1000 series. So, I mean, if we've got the pros and cons, but for the money, the Siglants are pretty good. You know, considering what you're getting for the money, you know, it's, it's incredible, really. I think about 10 years ago, what you could get then compared to what you get now. Massive difference. Am I glitching? Well, I've dropped my frame rate slightly. Well, data rate. I dropped it down slightly, and we'll see if that changes. Anything. I don't think I've dropped any more frames since then. Um, yeah. 204x plus. Had to in three minutes. Just now, final minutes. Yeah, you got the same. Don't say have you? I've. So, your scope would be equivalent to mine then, your STS 2104. I fully optioned mine as well. I also built a DIY probe, like the MSO probe. You know, you can buy those things. Um, I built my own. There's a project on EV Blog Forum about building a probe. Someone else came up with a design for them and fine tuned it pretty well. And I built my own. I did a video on it. Um, so, if you want to check my channel out later on, you'll see the DIY. I can't remember exactly what I call it now. DIY MSO probe for SDS 2000 X Plus. I can't remember what I called it. Um, so somebody else had designed it. I showed us built and did a video about it. But by the time I actually purchased all the bits, like decent cables, need like coaxial cables, ideally, um, the nice hook clips and things like that, and all the nice cabling, is actually getting close to the cost of buying one. Even though you think, oh, okay, the price of buying one is quite expensive. Um, reality is, not that much difference, really. So, you know, if you want decent cables and stuff on it, not just like twisted Ethernet cables, stuff like that, like, twisted pairs, you know, if you do that, it's a cheaper route. But I purchased some old HP cables, like logic analog cables, things like that, and use those. And by the time I put all those together, it's, it's about 100 Probably a hundred dollars difference between buying one, and I think, well, okay, yes, it's a nice project, but um, and it was cheaper. I probably would have just should have bought one. <laughs> um, right, not since dropped frame rate. We haven't dropped any more frames since, so hope it keeps behaving. I didn't drop it by much. I dropped it by like two hundred bit. Or 200k, 200 kilobit. Pick a good signal generator. Depends what you're going to use it for. It's okay, your 360p rural. Yeah. You got the pro with the on a promotion. Okay, cool. You probably got a good deal then. Yeah. SHS, so that's the handheld one, eh? Handheld portable scope. We've got a new one coming out. I don't know much about it yet. The, um. Hey, Ray, how's it going? So, yeah, I know they've got a new one coming out, or they've just launched it, so I'm not sure. I remember something about a new one, um, which I believe is going to be much better because of the, um, Yeah, because the stuff they're making these days is, is improved, knowing and if it's an early one, then, which it probably would have been, probably first generation, would it? I don't know. Um, they probably learned a lot from that. Twelve hundred plus, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you definitely got a deal, good deal on that. Um, I'm very much a DIYer though, so you know I like to. Um, do what I can, you know. Sometimes it's not worth it. Sometimes it's best to pay the money. But I like to. I don't like to pay the money, to be honest. If it's something I can figure out myself and do myself, I don't pay the money. I'm cheap like that. Don't like to waste money. I say I have to buy lots of test gear, which I may not ever use. 
Uh, anyway, so let's look at this poll. How's the poll going? So far, I've got 22 votes. So it looks like everyone that's here has voted. That's good. Um, at least the number wise. And it's leading to the IT28 capacitor tester. Okay, it's looking like we're going to play with that. It's even fun, yeah, even if it costs more, yeah, sometimes. Because even just doing it, you learn something. You know, you learn about more intricate details about certain things, and you have a better understanding. So that's the benefit there as well. Making a switch mode supply for the DMM. Okay. The vote is fixed. Let me guess, Dave, you voted for something else. Dave, I don't have capacitors there. <laughs> yeah, anyway, right. Okay, we're going to look at the uh, IT28. Rigged. <laughs> well, we might be able to do more than one thing. It's possible we can do more than one thing. So we'll start off with that. And if we get that finished, we'll do something else. So the second choice currently is the Valhalla. Right, poll is ended. Conoco. Conoco. Right. Can you work on a project to combine multiple devices in one? Control everything from Arduino. Okay. Or Raspberry Pi. Or Raspberry Pi, I'm guessing you mean. Nice. Let's try and read this. I can't read and talk at the same time very well. Oscilloscope and testing, what do, I, what do I advise? Depends what you're testing. What are you going to use it for? I mean, if it's on a very far waveform exists, you could probably get a cheaper scope you could buy. Um, if you want to do decoding, then you want something a bit better, like a, you know, a signal or maybe a Rigel or, or whatever. I don't, I've, I've never owned a Rigel. I've never used a Rigel. I don't know how good they are. I've only seen what I've seen other people doing. Um, I don't know. Roland Swartz, never used Roland Swartz. They were going to give me a scope a few years ago, but I never got around to it for some reason. I should actually approach them again so I can get one. And also I've got the key site, so I can only really talk for the key site and the signal. Um, and Tetronics, old Tetronics, old um, 2432A, got one of them. An old boat hangar that is. That's out of my other room on in storage. So, yeah, I can only really talk to those two brands, really. No, Fred, I can't. <laughs> anyway. Right, let's do something. So, you're sitting waffling, let's actually do something. Decode the signal with the hex head, yeah. Um, I mean, some scopes, like a lot of scopes, will do decoding through analog channels. You don't need the MSO option. If you're going to be doing logic analyzer or you need more than available input channels to do decoding, then um, you probably want the MSO. Um, but a lot of scopes can just use the analog channels to do decoding. You can just hook up to those and program it to decode from them. Right, IT28. This will need a new power cord as well. 
I was lying in bed last night, trying to go to sleep, thinking I really need to go to sleep because I've got to do live stream tomorrow. And it occurred to me that I need to get some power cables. Because I've got three things here. Two things here, which need new power cables on. And I think I've only got one cable. will seem to be tangled up in a mess. That's so cool. One cable. It's a two core, it's no good. I'm sure I'll be through this before. <laughs> That's American cables. I've got these American cables because they could be good for the wire or something like that, or the IC cable, just put a plug, new plug on it, that sort of thing. So I haven't checked those out yet. I've got a few of them. We really should reorganise those. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I've only got one power cable. So I have to choose what I put that on. Alright. This is a salvaged, salvaged thing off a fridge freezer. So it's pretty long. What's that? Two and a half meters, maybe? Two, I don't know, it's probably more than two meters. Let's find out. Come on, come back. Yeah, it's about 2.4 meters. Pretty long. Do I need a cable that long on it? <laughs> Hmm. I don't know. Is that a bit is that getting a bit excessive you think for piece of test gear? Alright, let's change views. Uh, some of my views aren't working on this thing anymore, that's interesting. My wide view of the desk isn't working. What happened there? I have to change something. Oh, well, this one though. I've got that one. Yeah, I think I changed some views when I was playing on new cameras. Alright. I'll just chuck this cable over for now until I need it. Get it away. So yeah, here we go. Oh, what's going on with this bloody desk for you? Discs. Why is this not right? Hold on, I was trying to find out why this is... Um, why is that not liking that? Oh, settings, that's right. It's in the wrong place. As long as I'm able to switch the views over, yes, that's the important thing. That's exactly right. <laughs> Hot keys, that's what I'm looking for. Right. So I've got settings in here in ABS for hotkeys. And okay, right, because I've changed the names, it's broken it. Right, so I need to remember what hotkeys I've got set up for this. Um, I need to open up my controller. Hold on, just bear with me for a minute. I need to sort this out while I'm thinking about it, else I'll never remember to do it again. <laughs> All right. Um, so, desk wide is sending out what? Right, here we go. Now I'm looking in. Okay, right. So, that one. 
Okay, I don't need to know IBS settings at all. That's fine. I can do it all from the uh, Stream Deck controller. Quick look at the chat before I get too far behind. How many cameras do I have? Um, one, two, three, four. Yeah, four. Four cameras. One eye. One eye is my normal recording camera. So I've got three webcams set up. I'm not settled on the actual setup yet. I might change it some more. I'm not completely sure I've got it right. What year is this? This will be probably late 60s, maybe 70s. Okay, so what other views were broken? Um, there was two views that were broken. Yeah, that one there as well. Give me a second. And that one. Okay, so that should now work. Yep, so zoom view, wide view, great. Um, I may change to being top view though, which is not that one. That one there, top view. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that one or not. I think sometimes that one's better. Okay, what's that play with? Yeah, I did do a video on some cables. Um, had aluminium. You also get one sometimes you've got steel conductors instead. So it can actually be steel wires. Um, those aren't very nice. Anyway. So I also need to do a video on this whilst I'm streaming, like I usually do. It's got some damage to the casing, which I'm going to need to sort out. So before I change the mains plug, I'm going to have to sort out, like, get, get the casing off. Because if I, once, I, can say, once I wire on a new mains cable, I won't be able to get the casing off because of that. Um, because the hole's too small to put the plug through. Um, I need to straighten this chassis out. Can't leave that like it is. And um, yeah, apparently it's changed with a 240 volt. Got to do that as well. That feels fine. That feels a bit gummy. So is that a little bit? Not too bad. That feels like it's rubbing slightly into lubrication. This one feels like it's been lubricated, but it's gummy. All right, finding posts. Yeah, they feel alright. Not not corroded up, like tends to happen to these things, so they're still good condition. You just have to replace any of those. That feels fine. So hopefully it's not too bad, it's a bit of lubrication. And obviously doing some parts inside. Alright. This will cool some video on this thing. Now the question is, do I want to give you the video cam stream instead of the webcam stream. I probably do because I'm more focused on that one. Let me just change this over. So we probably want that one. There we go, that worked. Oh, who's, who's left? Focus on the mug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if using the same piece of beer as on the desk on my vids, yes, because it's just sitting there. <laughs> um, 
then there's no particular reason for it. that PCB is just one I've got laying around it's salvaged out of an old fridge freezer and it's been a really good demo PCB when I'm doing these beginner series because I've been actually using that to demonstrate various parts like you know circuit analysis things like that a little bit you know showing the parts in situ and what have you so I've been using it for that as a demo board empty chair yeah What does this thing do? Well, basically, it can tell you capacitance value, and also you can check for leakage of a capacitor as well. So, if you've got a high voltage cap, say a 400 volt cap or whatever it may be, um, it will show you the leakage or the point it starts leaking at or whatever um, to find out if the cap is still good or not. Because a normal tester doesn't test the high voltage, it only tests at low voltage. You know, any capacitor tester tests at low voltage. But with these, you can actually stress the cap and put it through its paces and actually make sure it does not leak at high voltage. And, you know, that's something that other cap testers don't tell you. So if you've got a capacitor you don't want to replace because you don't have a spare, for example, you know, normally you just swap the thing out and, you know, if you've got doubts, just change it out. But if you've got a cap which you don't have a spare for or it's hard to get, you may want to just test it instead and then go from there. And um, a standard cap tester won't tell you if things going to leak at high voltage. Was this will, which is why I got one. Just turn the microphone around a bit more so you can hear me better over here. Okay. Record video. What's one what mic doing over there? Got a few things on the go here, which I need to sort out. Also, I want to do. A, I should know what I should do about. This bulb, I've got bulbs like this in my ceiling here. I've got like a three-way spotlight on the ceiling, which is all pointing towards the desk. <laughs> so I've got some different bulbs in it. I've got one like this, which is like an LED spot lamp, right? I've got two up there already. This one failed previously, and I replaced it. And I've got another one starting to flicker. So I think it's the other one which I hadn't replaced last time, um, but it's already up there. It's starting to flicker as well. This can actually be dismantled quite easily. I actually already pulled this one apart and I was quite surprised. So I thought I might do a little look at this as well, maybe. Pull this thing apart. I might just do a video on it, on tearing down an LED lamp. Um, and maybe try and fix it and see, see why it's flickering. Now, saying that, I'm looking at this, I can see a dark spot, but I think it's just dirt from when I pulled it apart last time. Um, but I think I know what's wrong with it. So it might be fixable. I've got another video on it. I don't know how to do it today though. Quite well, sitting there, something to look at. Okay. Hmm. I'm trying to see. Is that my desk that's walked or is it the feet? Oh, oh, not right. It's going this corner, this corner, rocking. And here it's going that corner, that corner. I think it's like my desk. <laughs> my desk must not be flat. Okay. My camera's too high. Dizzy yet? Right, record video. Right, I'm going to look at this thing today. This is a Heathkit IT28 capacitor tester. So I'm going to do a refurbishment on this. I'm going to put it apart, see what's wrong with it, fix it up hopefully. I haven't even powered this thing up. I've got no idea if it even works. But I'm going to do all this refurb work before I even turn it on for the first time because who knows what could go wrong. Could blow a valve or whatever if there's a fault with a, a part inside it so i'm gonna do a refurb on it first then power it up i also need to convert it from 120 volts to 240 volts as well which i believe can be done um and you know we'll work through this thing so stick around um right 
Okay, let's get this thing apart. Two screws here. This casing, can I say, this casing is bent up here, it's a bit distorted, it's been hit or dropped or something on this top edge, whether something's dropped onto it or whether it's been dropped upside down, I don't know. But um, I need to fix all this casing up as well. First thing is to get it apart, which is not easy because it's bent. There we go. So I haven't had this thing powered up at all. So this has come from the USA, I think it was, or Europe. I think it got from Europe, actually, I can't remember. No, USA has got that plug on it. Um, and not powered it up. So this, there's no power in these caps. There's no way it's going to be powering these caps after two months. It's very unlikely anyway. So I'm not worried about that. It should be safe. But normally when you're working on something like this, you want to make sure the capacitor is discharged because... They can hold hundreds of volts and they give you one hit of a jolt and potentially even kill you. So you need to be careful about stored energy in devices like this. Even just working on it, when I do power it up, there's hundreds of volts flowing around in this thing. It's not like low voltage stuff. These are dangerous. So you have to be careful. So there's a bit of dust in here. You know, it's not been messed with. It's still got a dust residue on it. Um, you know, on these resistors, covered in dust. So problem with these things, these old resistors, they too tend to leak, they end up going a higher resistance. So you have to check every single resistor to make sure they're still within their tolerance. Now these are all got a silver band on them. So last band is silver, which means that is a 10% tolerance on resistance value. If it was a gold band, it would be 5% tolerance. So as long as they're within 10% of the original marking, then I'm happy with that. If they've gone greater than 10%, then I'll need to replace them. So I'm just looking around to see what we need to do. So we've got some precision stuff over here. You've got to be careful about these precision resistors. Um, but yeah, lots of these carbon composite resistors in here. Um, well over the place. So this is doing something. I don't know what that's for. <laughs> um, there's the main power transformer here. And the wiring down here which I need to change to make it 240 volt but I'll do that when I change the power cord because that's a part of that process is changing the power cord and changing the voltage um, I'm not quite sure how that is done yet I need to figure that out but apparently it can be changed to uh, 240 volt right Check the chat. Um. Power cables getting cheaper lately. Yeah, the power cables I purchased were from AliExpress, and they were cheap. The postage is more good than the cables. Who knows what they actually are? They rate at the 10 amps, but are they really? <laughs> Could be interesting, but the stuff I'm using these on, it's all low current stuff anyway. So if it's not 10 amps, it only does 5 amps, um, it's probably going to be fine. I did build one, yes. I did build a high voltage cap tester using an Arduino. I did a little project of that. I think I open sourced it. I don't remember. Actually, I think I did. Bulb guess is heat transfer compound. Yes, good guess. That's what I think of this too. My frame rate dropped again. Let me um, drop. I dropped some more frames. It's going to drop the uh, quality down a bit more. Interestingly, my ISP, my provider, which provides my wireless internet, they did some site upgrades a couple of days ago, and um, it's supposed to be better. But 
I'm not seeing it being better yet. Need to replace the white two class, you reckon? Um, how are they wired in? Let's have a look. So those are you got one here which is across the mains. Is that right? No. Above to earth. They're both going to earth. So those are the two mains inputs and that's the earth terminal there. So yes. This is a rated 1400 volts DC. Can't see much else though. I don't know, I'm not too worried about those. I mean, they're going to Earth, so if nothing goes wrong with those, it's um, it's going to trip the ICD out anyway. It's going to shunt it to the ground, so I'm not too worried about those ones. If it's across the supply, I'd be a bit more worried about it. Yeah, okay. I don't think I should de-dust this thing before I do anything, actually. Let me just de-dust this. Oh, locking my lights around. I'm trying to get my brush. I'll be back in a second. I'm just going to pop outside, brush off the worst of the dust. It's de dusted. Got most of anyway. So, you know, less dust than there was. Alright, so we've got the boring task of measuring all the resistors to make sure they're okay. Also, we've got those two electrolytics we need to check as well. Let's do that first. There was two there. There's so a film camp down there, a couple of paper camps over here. Alright. So I'm going to start off by testing capacitors. Just get that job out of the way. See what this thinks of it. Fifty two microfarad point four ohms. Well, it says something. <laughs> Forty. Oh, that's quite high. No, oh, over here. I haven't got it hooked up yet. That one. Fifty two and point five one. Probably the same value cap as well. Okay, let's check this film cap. I don't know what it's going to do. Could be interesting. Open circuit low capacitance. Yeah, okay, maybe not then. It's 0 0.05 microfarad. So, yeah. Then we've got over here some 200 volt caps. Which 
going to this valve. I don't think it's going to show up at all. The ESO, no, no capacitance measured. And then we've got another one over here, which goes to the same point, so I'll stick it on there. That's measuring something. 0.58 microfarad, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that really matters yet. I think that's a 5, or 0.5, that's a 0.1, that's a 0.5, did measure 0.5, this one couldn't measure, so those probably are right, I don't know, I'm not used to doing this high voltage stuff, so I'm not quite so sure about it, but um, yeah, that measured okay, I suppose I should check for DC leakage, shouldn't I, I mean I measured leakage with that, let's measure DC leakage, there could be some leakage coming through from the valve though. So maybe I should unplug the valve. If I can. Come on, unplug. Give not to damage the valve in the process. There we go. Just in case there's leakage through there. No, 0.7 meg. It's also this thing here. It's one of where else we get leakage from. And that one there. 270k. So that does appear to be leakage. If I measure from that side, yeah, that's what's this one here? Twenty six K, so I'm getting leakage through this. One meg. I'm probably getting leakage through that. And the other one is I don't know where that goes. So it could be leakage from something else, it could be nothing. I'm not going to suspect those yet. Now we've got this valve back in again, whichever way it came out. Which way did it come out? <laughs> I think these only fit one way. There we go. It's got a key pin, which is bigger than the rest. Check. Um. Connect black, yellow, and black, green to put the two primaries and series. Yeah, that's. I think that's what I read in the manual actually. So I worry about that when I did the power cord stuff, I was worried about that part then. Um, I have to look it up. Probably still going to replace them, yeah, probably. I don't have any equivalent capacitors though. I hate the way I'm scrolling through the chat and it jumps. In circuit testing is unreliable because you have componentry around it which causes issues. The ESR70 tester which I'm using is designed to do in circuit as well. So it actually allows for that. So um, if that says it's okay in circuit, it probably is. 
but obviously when you've got componentry around it, it can of cause the readings to be skewed and affected. Yeah. I think I should replace those paper caps, but I don't have any equivalent caps to replace them with. Because those are high voltage caps, like 200 volt caps, and I don't have anything. I don't think. Let me check, actually. I'm saying that. Um, so, 0.5 and 0.1. So, 0.22. Seven. That's not what yeah. No. I don't seem to have caps I can use to replace those, so they're gonna have to get some. I'm gonna do that. I've got some point four seven, I think. Yeah, point four seven. So I could replace one of them. Let's go and replace them both. What's this rated for? 275 volts AC. Doesn't specify DC. Hold on. This other one's 310 volts AC. Was it say DC? Hold on. Can't quite see. I think it's DC. 310 DC, this one. Let me check. No, this is AC as well. So I don't know what these are rated for for DC. They might not be rated for DC. Uh, there's no DC markings on these. I don't know if they can handle it or not. They might be able to. I prefer not to you know, use a capacitor which isn't stated, is it? But that's an X2 cap. Well, I think it is. Don't know. So I've got some caps here, but I'm not sure if they're suitable. So I might just buy some and deal with it that way. Try and get my drawer shut again. I think I should just buy some caps to do this. Those particular parts. Let's move this over here, so when I'm doing testing I'm not blocking the meter. I'm guessing I was doing that last time, wasn't I? I was blocking it. Probably was, I expect. Okay. Send all those files. <laughs> So let's start the tedious task of checking all the resistors to make sure they look about right. Now these ones are going to be hard because they're across these trimmers. So they obviously they have to pad the trimmers out, so these ones probably don't matter too much. Um, I mean if I've measured them, it's probably going to be pointless because they're across the trimmers. So it's 14k. All right, I'll measure this one here. All the same values as well. 11k. This one here. 23k. So yeah. Um, and these are all the same value caps, so kind of pointless because they're across trimmers. So let's measure this one here, which is across the capacitor to drain the capacitor down. So this is not going to help. Yeah, see, I can't really measure that without disconnecting it. I don't really want to do that either. But if that's only just to drain the capacitor, probably not so important. Um, how's that hooked up? It's going to there. 
There's a white wire, is it? Pink wire goes to this one. These two caps are in series. So what that will likely be is no resistor here across this cap. So these resistors are probably here to provide balancing. So you've got two caps in series, sometimes stick a resistor across both. That gives you an equal voltage across both capacitors. See, I'm not about to measure this, am I? That's all trick to make sure the balance is correct between the caps. Otherwise, if you put two caps in series, say if you've got two 200 volt caps, right, you're running on a 400 volt power supply, for example, you could potentially end up with one capacitor with 250 volts across it and one capacitor across with 150 volts across it. That would be imbalanced. So the trick is to put two resistors in series in parallel with those capacitors. So that means the resistors will hold the current right, uh, the resistors will hold the voltage right. So they'd be balancing the voltage out like a resistor divider. So it means the center point will be half of the voltage, which means both capacitors will see the same voltage. Um, in case you realize that's what they do. So I'm get a, well, I'll have to get a reading off these, but I don't think I'm going to. Oh, I don't think this is possible. Because it's obviously charging the caps up. Um, I mean, if they got value, it probably won't matter too much as long as they're not open circuit. They don't seem to be. I'm getting something there. So I'm charging it backwards now. Hmm. Pretty inconclusive. The only way to do that really is to disconnect the uh, resistor and try again. So we've got another resistor here, which is in parallel with that one, is it? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Resistors in parallel. This is, is going to be tricky. You're getting 24k. We've got two resistors in parallel there. And here you've got two resistors in parallel. It's also your power handling. Similar values. Then we've got this one here. This is all charging up capacitors and stuff. This is driving me nuts. <laughs> inconclusive. These big ones are all inconclusive. I might have to come back later on and do some of these, like disconnect them and measure them individually. Let's measure some other ones. Let's come down here. It's on the back of a valve. Get a decent connection. 51k, that sounds normal. 51k sounds normal. Is it orange, black, something? Can't quite see the colours. It looks like brown, black, brown, actually. Hmm. They might be being affected by the valve. This has been pretty inconclusive so far. This isn't a very good way of testing resistors, is it? 241k here, yeah, we've finally got a decent one. And that is uh, red, red, yellow. So it's 220. That should be 220k, so that's 10% out. It's right borderline, isn't it? It's like 10% high. I think I might leave that one alone. This one here is also red, red, yellow. S230 is looking all right. Uh, this one here. Okay, 670 ohms. We got there. Is that blue, grey, brown? Maybe it's violet. Violet would be right. Grey be higher. So yeah, that seems all right. Looking promising so far. 1.5 meg. Uh, we've got a green band there, so probably. So brown, green, green. So that's 155. 1.5 meg. What did I say it was? 1.5, yeah, cool. And this one here. Looking promising so far. 96 ohms. You got brown, black, brown. 
so it should be 100 ohms, so it's reading slightly lower. All right. Tedious, isn't it? <laughs> I've got all these vistas around here to measure. <sighs> the thing is, I do know from other videos I've seen, like I've seen, I think it's Mr. Carlson's lab, I think did one, and resistor, I think it's this one here, which you can't really see, it's the lighting, but that one there, um, seemed to play up. But I need to check all of them. And yes, that is tedious. As you're in a string, I might just go on to the next and add them up. I don't know, but <laughs> anyway. 557. And we got uh, green, blue, brown. So 5, 6. Yeah, close enough. All right. I got 30 ohm. And we've got grey, red, brown. Yeah, okay. That's close. Might be worrying about nothing for these things. 1k, we got one, so we got brown, black, red, which is correct. Red, red, red. And we're getting 2.3k. Okay, it's very slightly high. Point six, and we're getting yellow, purple, red. I think it is. Yeah, that's. It that might be blue. It's all looking pretty good so far. Ten k, and that is uh, getting harder to see. Is that ten k? I said that one. What was that? Ten k. That's just like orange, black, orange, which would be a three. So that's interesting. Maybe it's supposed to be red. Could it be a faded red? Because, I mean, yeah, if it's a faded red, it makes sense. Next one. Looks like brown, black, orange. 10k. Maybe it's a brown then. Maybe it's a brown. Brown, black, orange, brown, black, orange. Um, get it right, Scott. Another brown, black, orange there. Should be another 10. Yeah. Is that another one there? Might be on a, a roll now. If I can try and see in here. Okay, another tent there. This might be easy now if it's, get, it's all tens. That's a tent. That's a tent. Another tent. Another tent. Values are slightly varying, aren't they? They're not perfect values. That's 15. So is that resistor different? Can't see the damn thing. I don't think it was different. I think it was a 10. Hmm. What's this one here? That's 39. I'm drifting. So the 39 one is measuring, well, it's red, red, orange. So that's 220, oh, sorry, 22, that should be 22K. There could be circuitry affecting that, because I'm not the end of the wire connection is. There wouldn't be a higher level though, would it? Let's try to change the switch position. No difference. Okay. And then that one here, which I measured, which was giving 15, I think that's supposed to be a 10. I'm pretty sure. So I'm suspicious about these two end resistors. Right. 
It goes this to across here. Let's measure that one. The connection. 200 ohms. What have we got there? Blue, grey, brown. Or is it violet? I don't know. It's hard to say with these old resistors. Um, Blue gravy 680. So, yeah, it's close. That's 45. All right. You've got some over here. So, I've got two here, which I'm suspicious of at the end of that switch. Did I measure that one? I think I did. 600. Green, blue, brown. 560. Yeah, okay. Brown, black, brown, 0.4 ohms, I'm getting across there. I think it was brown, black, brown. So 0.5 ohms, my lead resistance is 0.1. Getting 0.3 there, okay, that's getting better. Probably just connections and stuff, okay. So that should be 100. If it's read correctly. So there's probably that switch maybe. 2.3 ohms now. It's probably switch connection and stuff. It's probably other circuitry around it which is fitting it. Yeah, seems that way. Okay. Next one, 51k, and that's yellow, purple, or violet, orange. Yeah, so that's probably 47, so close enough. Now I've got these position resistors down here. Good connection. Maybe that's a capacitor. That's a capacitor. There's that resistor. There we go. I mean, unless these are open, but um, they're probably capacitors. Then. Okay. Not quite sure they are. It could be capacitors. Two meg on that one. Two uh, twenty k on that one. Two hundred ohms, point one ohms. To that point, let's check it here. Nine K. Try and read them now. That's nine K. Reading them would be definitely be nice. I have to look at the manual for those. Yeah. Okay. Well. So we've got two over here. Which I'm suspicious about the rest so far. I've seen fine. Now the ones in here are because wherever the voltage you set to on this, it has to go through those resistors because it goes through the chain, right? So it links through them all, and um, it builds up. Like a series of rows, so everything goes through those two. So if those, if it's been stressed anywhere, those first ones could go, which is possibly what's happened. But I'm getting some weird readings on that one, definitely. Check the chat because I've missed loads. Of it, I'm sure of it. Hey, don't me.
Yeah, super powerful sync or tester. Yeah, that was nice. I've been watching for those actually. Hey Darren, how's it going? Also including cathode, I've got no idea. <laughs> I don't even know which connection is which yet. I'm dug that deep. I'm not a valve person. I don't really normally work on valve gear. This is I only own two pieces of valve gear. This thing and the IT12 we did last week. Halfway colorblind. Oh yeah, I'm partially colorblind on pink. So yeah, I I, I do understand that. Very only partially colorblind. I can't see pink. Just shades of pink. I sometimes can't determine them. I haven't tried cleaning anything yet, apart from wiping the dust off. Okay, Dave. Thanks for dropping by. Catch you later. Probably gone by now. Six minutes ago. Scanning is the key indeed. So I do have the electronic manual for this thing. Let me find that. Let's pull that up. Uh, let's see, Heath Kit. I've got lots of. I've got a folder full of stuff on here. So I've got three different versions. Let's go for the biggest one. <laughs> That's easier than most promising. Show us at the top screen. So then we'll look at it together. Alright, three nice heavy manuals. So let's look through here. So we've got the eye tubes are in series, it would seem. tube circuit with those I don't know <laughs> circuit description stuff it's not what we want is it it's a rough diagram there we go that's what I'm seeing these two here are the two which aren't looking right these two end ones. 22k and 10k, yes. I definitely was measuring 10k there. And I wasn't measuring 22k here. These are both measuring weirdly. So I think I need to replace both of those because all the others measured right. Um, so yes, yeah, so from here onwards, I was getting 10k right around. Did I measure those very two M1s? I'm not sure I measured those. Yeah, I did actually. I measured that one, yeah. And yeah, I did do those. So this is very two M1s here the 22K and the 10K. So these, that's the 22K is a 1 watt resistor, and the 10K is the same as the rest, which is probably a half watt, I'm thinking.
should check out Ralphie's channel. I think I looked at it once. I, I don't know. I didn't really gel with it. I don't know. Maybe I just chose the wrong video. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, there's all oh, half what was just as. Yeah, this capacitor, micro capacitors, those are, those are the ones I was measuring. So, yeah, micro capacitors. Right. They were not resistors, they're different capacitors, like I thought. Okay, keep going. A diagram here somewhere. No, oh, well, wait a minute. Long info. Here we go. How to wire it up for 240 volt. So that's page 24. I need to remember that. Do we actually have these wires here? Because if I don't have the right wires. Could be all kinds of disaster. You got some greens. <laughs> got black, green, black, red, black, yellow, and black. So the red ones, which go through the chassis. That side, yeah, okay, got red ones going through the chassis. Black, yellow, black, red. Black, green, and black. Yep, there we go. All the wires are there. Sweet, so I can definitely sort that out. Right. I've got the white wire coloured, so that's looking very promising. Oh, turn the multimeter off. That turned on. Don't want to waste batteries. So that's alright, I can sort that out later on. I'll do it now. Um. Right, that's those resistors. So we put these resistors in here, I can't say in here, um, didn't quite do it this way. They actually wrapped this resistor around this one. So between those two resistors there, I should be getting about 23, which is what I was getting, 23 and a half, wasn't I? 23, 24, so that's correct. Same on that pair, 33 from that one. So that's got interesting differences here, actually. This is not, it's not showing them all yet. Hold on. Have a 33. I shall come back on the camera shortly. Let's have me a quick look. So that's that one there, that one there. That should be 33. Oh, give me a second. I will be back. I haven't forgotten about the camera. Don't worry. I'm coming back. And I'm getting a charging there. It's around 30k, but it's charging. So it's close. Or oh, the resistor, resistor is leaky. No, say the bloody words. Resistor is leaky, potentially. Which that point. That's 240k there. This point here goes through to that trimmer. Just give me a second, I'm just trying to test this to determine whether that 30 is wrong or not. This could be a leaky resistor. Could be a bad one. This, I'm not expecting it to be drifting like that. So it could be other circuitry affecting it. So anyway, that's fine. Come back. Yeah, I was just looking at the C3 trying to figure out whether that should be measuring correctly or not. I can't tell where it goes yet. Um, yeah, but these resistors are actually going in between these two capacitors, which are in series. You can see the loop there, push them in series. The ones that go across, I'm showing on this diagram. Oh, they're a different diagram. Is that something someone's added to help balance them? Maybe it's a later edition or something. Yeah, it doesn't seem to show at all. So it looks like those have been added on later on. 
There's nothing wrong with them being there. So it looks like it's actually not part of that diagram. Oh, where's the circuit diagram? That's how it's... Go on, where's the circuit diagram? Uh, big capacitors, see they are there. Not shown. Not shown a diagram. So, yes, yeah, this must be a later edition. Oh, it's bigger so you can see it. Those are two big caps. No resistance across them. So this is a later change. So where's that 33 go? It goes between that lot there and these capacitors. Yeah, so there we go. That's running between a capacitor supply and here. So yeah, we'll be getting leakage there and charging caps. So that's not surprising. I can't read that one as well then. Right. That does make perfect sense. It explains what I'm seeing. Um. Oh, Q's is gone. Catch that, Q's. Yeah, markers I'm not usually suspicious about. Quite a light on my right side. Is it really bright? Is it? I suppose because I've got a window here, you see. I mean, if I do that, that might make it slightly softer. There you go, probably slightly better. Yeah, that's probably good enough now. Yeah, but better. I'm being by a window, isn't it? There we go. That must be better now. Right. Um, so, we've already seen some circuit differences between this diagram and that one. So, let's look for another unit. You can see my list here of things I've got to do. These are videos I've already done. These ones I've got to do yet. Um, let's try a different one. Sometimes different versions available. This is going a bit wacky. Okay. okay. Smaller. Okay. Bit resized. Okay, so 14 pages. So come on, page 10. Let's give me around this one. Right? We go, this is this version. It's a better diagram actually. Um, but no sitters there either. Still daffod. No difference, exactly the same. And now we've got this one. Go back. This looks like probably the same. I always get multiple copies of the same manual. Yes, exactly the same, no difference. So Either someone added those later on because I thought it would be a good idea, or there's a revision which added those in because it is a good idea. <laughs> Otherwise, say so you can get one capacitor at a different voltage to the other one. Now this is 600 volts coming through here. So, because that is tapped off, the other event diagram goes, the other one was better, I think. I think the second one was better. So, now I'm back up. I actually think this one might be better. Yeah, I think this is a better diagram, actually. Yeah. Um, so the 600 volts comes across here. And that connects to those first two resistors which we saw, right? Which is that 10k. This has got 88k there. This is different. Different values here. That's interesting. So 
instead of being 22, it's got 88. That can't be right, surely. Surely it's just a print. So this one shows 22. Okay, I think I will stick the original one. <laughs> Change that. Okay. This is what we've got anyway. We've got this. So I think I need to change both those resistors. Resistors. I can't even say the word. I need to drink some more. Um, if you may complain, open click to video was hard to see. Okay. Is that because of the um, paper being so bloody bright? I did try changing the switch position, David. Um, I mean, I was getting a higher resistance, not a lower resistance, on these ones. They both measure high. This one measured 15, a 10k measured 15, and this one measured about a 40 or something like that. So, for resistance to be higher, there's either a capacitor going on there or um, the resistor's gone high value or even open. I th really think this one here is bad. So, let's see what I've got as far as these resistors go. So, the 10k one watt, oh, sorry, 10k half watt and the 22k one watt minimum. Writing was too small, hardly picking up. Okay, yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, it's pretty hard to do that stuff sometimes. Right. Um, okay, 22k. Do I have a 1 watt 22k? Mm, yes, I do. But is it actually 22k or is it 20k because I've got them in the same drawer? Let me measure, hold on. That's a 20k, not a 22k. Of course. I might have to buy some. If I've got some on what 11k's, I could stick up with a series, I suppose. Got some half watts. What are these? Twenty K as well. That's helpful. something up to make that work but the thing is though whatever I do there is going to affect the voltage accuracy of the output so if I go off value with that, with that particular resistor it will affect the whole range being off value slightly so be careful to get that right 11k no I've only got bloody 1 8 watt resistors in 11k Ten K, half watt ten K. I got one of them. Hopefully, let's measure it. Nine point nine K. Let's get something more accurate. Nine point nine K. Well, these are going to be really good tolerance. Nine point nine K. Oh, seriously, come on. 9.97, it's getting pretty close. 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 
I put 88. So 9.97, that'll do. That's one of the resistors. So I need to push up something for the 22. Let's see, 47s. Let's cut the 47s in parallel. That'd be close. What we got is measuring them. <laughs> They're actually 47 exactly as well. That's typical. Yeah. I was hoping something a bit lower, you know, like 46, <laughs> 45. No, these are really close to tolerance. These are bang on 47. That's all going to work. Okay. I'll need to sort out resistors for that. So, I've got 20s. I've got 2K. What have we got in 2K? That's not a 2K, that's 1K. What the hell is that doing there? <laughs> that's a 1K resistor. That's not in the right box. something together then I I need to get something to work. I've got some 68s here, I wonder if they're slightly low value, because if they're low value they don't work. Let's stick three of them in parallel. No, that's the opposite way around, that's 70k. That's not going to work. Let's see, 68, 68, 68, 68. Point six K. Four of those would be close, wouldn't it? Four of those in series. That's a bit clunky, though. And they're measuring five point five five. Five point five five. The tolerance is really good in these. Five point five five. Five point five three. Five point five five. Five point five five. Wow, these are really good tolerance. These things. they're really close to each other. Five point five four. Five point five five. I reckon this will be close enough. I stick four of these in series together. It's going to be big. 
Um, yeah, I'm not sure about the current rating though. They might get a bit hot. I'm not sure they're big enough. But they, I think they won what resistors, but I'm not confident about them. Um, you know why he's filling me, it's fine. Big Clive, just ended it. I don't know if Big Clive redirected to me this time, I'm not sure if he did it or not. Okay, good night, Elin. Eleven twenty two there, yeah. So Yeah, I'm not sure how important that one what rating is. So the other ones are half what. I mean is it just because half it wasn't quite enough? I mean if I can do a bit more I think these are one what resistors, I'm not completely sure they are. I had 26 people turn up, so maybe some people came from last time. So I've gained a few more since Clive finished, so maybe some people have dropped in. Um, okay, so I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this. I just need to make 22k, right? It's not going to be that hard. I just want to use a big enough resistor, that's the problem. So I'm not confident these resistors are big enough, the ones I've got, these 5k's. Although putting forth them as sewers would work quite well, I think. Mind you, I'll be putting forth them as sewers and spreading a load across each one, so that probably makes it slightly better. Constantine, my resistors. I don't know about those. Not my thing. Okay. Um, I need to sort out a resistor for this. I mean, I've got one resistor. I need that. I've got a 10k. I'm happy with that one. Because the resistor that's in there is quite large and it is, say, says 1 watt. And it does have the full 600 volts going through it. So um, all that power goes to drive the load is going through that. So, yeah, definitely be careful about not under racing that resistor. Hey Clive's here. Hey Clive. I should make you a mod right, shouldn't I? How's that? I'll make you a mod. Um Yeah, I should should underrate the resistor, here we go. <laughs> see how hot it gets. See if we can get the thermal camera out, see if it starts glowing. That'd be the way to go, are they? Glow it. <laughs> yeah. Um I don't know, four of those visits in series is going to be quite chunky. It's a bit messy, really. It's not a great way of doing it. I'd rather put two resistances in parallel than four in series, to be honest. Let me see what I can do for that. I'm not still not happy with that choice. Um, so I've got the 47s. Threes will be 36, I've got 37s, only quarter watt, not good enough. Oh, maybe that would be if in parallel. Uh, yeah, 37s would be pretty close with them. These are 37 half watts as well, actually. This might be an option. Well, I, I say 36, let's measure them. So look at this one already, I can't remember. And I, I know I'm off shot, just bear with me. They are exactly 36. So, that's what I want, then if I stick three of them in series, sorry. No, that's not right, I'm, I'm going wrong. Right. Three of them in parallel will be 12. I don't want 12, I want 22. I'm an idiot. Okay, um, not that one. Bloody hell. I tried to do mass in my head, I shouldn't do that. 
68 was the three in power I was looking at. So I might have to use like a almost right pair, then use another one to try and balance it. That might be the way I have to go for that. Or I just do the 20 and then put another one in series with that, which is the other option I have, wasn't it? So I have that one and the 2K there. I might just have to go for that one. I hope for the best. Um, 2K, oh, I didn't have a did not 2K. That's the problem with there, wasn't it? Oh, I did not have a one. What 2K resistor? Okay. 12K? No. Um, what other options can I do? Six. Yeah, 8.2, so I need 14, 15. That's too much, isn't it? That's, that's, that's 23. That's not going to work. There must be a simple solution for this. Am I just over worrying about this value? I mean, I. What about two one Ks in series? I've do two one Ks and a twenty K. That needs to be three resistors instead of four. I think that'd be better. Obviously, then you've got the cumulative effect of all the resistors stuck together. I think I'll do that way. Um, my resistors will get stuck in its drawer. Right. So two two one Ks. We've got a solution. Two one Ks and a twenty K. Is this when I find that I've actually got two lots of resistors in here, so I'm actually R22K? I don't know this for nothing. It's possible, isn't it? Let me just measure these quickly, and I'll change camera views if I need to. That is exactly 20K, or 19.93, close enough. This one is 2K, what the hell? <laughs> These ones are put in there because they're 1K, I measured them before. Bloody hell, right. Oh, that's solved then, isn't it? Right there, that's weird. I must have got those two mixed up when I originally stored these. What happened there? Okay, so we got a solution, we got the resistor we need. Let's remove these again. That's weird. I measured these. Maybe there's two stuck together or something. I don't know. Put them back. That wasted a lot of time, didn't it? I had the solution right at the beginning. Put it back. Put that back. Right. Let's get this sorted out. Let's change camera views. So now we've got to do, we've got to change. That was just a near 22, and that one is a 10. All right. Replace those. So let's change to. I'll put the camera back up first. I'll just go blind. Hope for. <laughs> you fear for the bag being full of resistors. <laughs> yeah, Clive, that's what I'm trying to do is make, is make up a mixture of resistors to make the thing work. Um, yeah. Just try and catch up with chat. Okay, camera's on. Should we be able to see that right? I'm not going to order loads of resistors. I've got drawers and drawers full of resistors. I don't need them. I just need to get the right mixture. Um, it's just annoying I didn't have the 22k in this size. That's the problem. I've only got the 20. Actually, it's 5.6 and you put those back. 
So I've got these two here, which I'm suspiciously thinking are exactly the same as this now. That's 20k. There's 2k. There we go. So those are the two which I need to stick together, which you can't see because I'm out of shot because I'm an idiot again. Get wider. There we go. Not to the atom for it. So those two there are going to go in series. This one here should be oh, this one here should be the ten. Just double checking because I've been juggling everything around. And there's the ten. Right. So I'm going to start by twisting these together. So I don't mix them up. Now we'll try and get to these things to get them out. I think I might have to cut them. They're not easy to get to, but it's not insurmountable. Yeah, I'll have to cut them. Okay. We've all video. Let's turn it off now. I'll probably measure them once I take them out as well. I'll probably find out there's actually nothing wrong with them. <laughs> and circuitry around, I'm messing them up somehow. Right. Okay, let's get these resistors out of here. So I've got to cut these things out. After much messing around, I managed to find some resistors I can use. I didn't actually have a 22k one watt resistor. I've got a 20k and a 2k, which is going to have to do the job. I've also got a 10k resistor here to replace the other ones, which I'm suspicious of. There's two here, so I'm going to cut those out because I can't get them off easy because they're wire wrapped through the holes on the switch. So I've got to cut the things off. So I'm going to do that. Now I've got to try and get the thing out of the way. I'm trying to get the other end of that resistor is tricky. Also, we'll be careful not to break the switch in the process of bending these things around. Can't get the cutters in there. This is going to be a problem. Different cutters are needed. Oh, it's not the lights over again. Got to move those. Can this one get in? Come on. Something give me a break. <laughs> no, that doesn't get any. Next one. Those pliers. Got it with that one, just. And I can get the other one at least to cut that one. Nice not great view for you guys, is it? Anyway, move it a bit closer. It's all about getting that shot in the process, you know? I want to concentrate on what I'm doing. Come on. Gotcha. Right. There it is. That is a pain. Okay, so I need to put this one in first. I'll trim these legs down, get them about right before I start. Fan in here, but you probably won't do much. 
to be far away. Once I've got those visitors cut out, now I've got to try and get ready to put the new ones back in. Because you first sold one here. Gives a good starting point. It's not taking very well. Might need to put some flux on there. Oh no, it's getting there now. Come on. There we go. It would be nice to get the original wires out, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. This one here is really close to the chassis, I'm not liking that. Especially as it's high voltage going through there. That's when I break the wafer switch and completely destroy the thing. <laughs> I think what I might end up doing is putting some tape along the chassis there. Just to... Uh, create some kind of layer insulation. I just don't like the fact there's only a really small gap between the chassis and that resistor which is potentially hundreds of volts. I just think that's a bad idea. Right. Let's try and get this in. I'm only using a fairly low temperature on this, under 250 degrees C. I'd hold the thing, it'd be great. Might need to turn this up slightly. It doesn't struggle so much. What we're trying to do this inside this chassis is not easy. Not much room here. Okay. So once I'm done, I want to be able to move this up out of the way and bend it up like this. Yep, that should be good. Now I've got to put the other one, the other pair, in that spot next to it. I'm going to burn my fingers now.
So I'm hoping that this isn't basically the only thing that's wrong with this, is that it's just this and I can just um, swap it that power lead, convert it to 240 volt and power it up and give it a try. I might, I'd like to get it done today. I think there's no reason why we can't. This is the only thing we've found so far. It's probably fine. There's probably not much wrong with it. Which is always nice, I suppose. Minor up here is always nice. Let's figure out I'm going to get this in here. Really, this tip's a bit small for what I'm doing here. Come on. Oh, God. Now I've dropped the visitors. So it gets fiddly again. I'll probably put some heat shrink or something over this. Oh, maybe I won't actually. Might need the heat dissipation. Get in there. Yeah. We'll see what I'm doing, I think. Let's go through here. Right. So yeah, we'll try um, powering up soon. It's on it. These folded in so they're not going to be a problem. I think I might put something near to secure it all together so it doesn't actually flood around. A lot of this will do over the top of that as well. This stuff's getting a bit old, it's getting a bit gloppy. That's the word, isn't it? Gloppy. I don't want to cover up too much, I don't want to uh, trap the heat in. I just want them to be held in place. Because these have got thinner leads on than the originals. Let's tip it over this way so it doesn't drip into it when it's drop out. Okay. So whilst we're doing that actually, we can do the power cord stuff because that's this side. We can do all this stuff. So we'll get this power cord out. I'm actually we did a live stream. Actually I'll stop recording now. So we did a live stream um a few weeks back, wasn't it? A month or so ago. I ordered some pliers for doing these grommets, right? So these cable relief strain. Cable relief strains, cable strain reliefs. Um, so you could top those out. And I ordered them, haven't arrived yet, and that's ages ago now. That's over a month. And I kind of need one now. I need to get this out and get the new one in once I make the hole bigger. Because I've got to change the cable. So that's annoying because I don't have the tools to do the job still, despite me borrowing it. That's irritating. So let's see if I can get this out with a screwdriver because it's. It's going to be a problem. Okay, let's get started. Right, so we'll get this cable strain relief out to change the mains cable now. Now we've got to a point where we can probably do that. I'll try and get this out. I did buy a proper tool for this. It hasn't arrived yet. So I have to keep bodging it with the pliers for now. Because I've actually got to swap this out. I've got to put a new cable on. 
and swap this out, make this hole here bigger and make a new gland for it, well get a gland for it and put that in there but without the proper tool it makes it a bit harder anyway we shall make do so this is a three core cable which is soldered directly onto these pieces of the tabs here, it's actually through these holes so I've got to pull those out Press my iron temperature a little bit actually, make it a bit easier. There's one. The earth is in the middle. I always have to rewire this transformer for 240 volts, so we need to do that too. Would have been easier if I put some fresh solder on this and had a bit of bigger tip on it. But um, I'm being lazy about changing my soldering iron tip. This is going to cost me, I think. It's always the last one. It's always the last one that gives trouble. Have you ever found that? You know what you do, it's always the last one. There we go. So that's the cable off. That can go on the bent. Don't need that. So now I've got to make this hole here bigger. Let's check the chat. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, Fred's gone. Hey Andy. <laughs> Tip's a bit small, yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. All flux, though. Yeah, it's frozen, is it? Oh, no, it's not. It's not frozen. A little bit. What are you guys talking about? Oh, did it really? It froze again. Oh, that's bloody attacking. I think it happened last week too, didn't it? Oh, you're kidding. Oh, you guys are just making this up, aren't you? You're making it up. <laughs> I wonder if it's because of this bloody connection. I've got a dodgy connection on the camera. It can be a bit funny, right? So if I knock it, maybe you'll see it's flicking on and off now, right? Oh, are you kidding me? See, right now it's back on, but OBS has said nope. Fuck, that's irritating. Because if I use these, can I say, if I use this camera, you don't have the same problem, but you can't see as much. Mind you, if it's freezing up, you can't see anything. So, yeah. Ian from Scotland would like you to know that your video has frozen. Yeah, I just found out. Okay. Okay, how did you contact her? How did he find myself? You got your number. He got my number. That's pretty clever, Ian. How did you do that? <laughs> That's a big, big brother, if you ask me. <laughs> oh dear. I will have to send you my mobile number, Ian. But my mobile's not actually in my room right now, it's actually in my bedroom. It's not actually in here right now. Deserve a big slap, yeah. As far as I thought, oh, you're kidding me. Oh. Damn it. I 
This is annoying. I don't want to have to keep dealing with my camera freezing up. Can't hide from me. <laughs> it's probably not too hard to find my wife's number, actually, in a, in a way, to be honest. I'm not going to say more than that, for these reasons. I can't believe this bloody camera froze up again. Fuck. I'm going to deox it. I'm going to deox the cable connector. I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to shove some deoxy on it, because this thing's driving me nuts. It keeps on playing up. There might be power coming the other end. It might go bang. Let's find out. It didn't go bang. That's always a good song. <laughs> oh, my God. There's some jocks sitting in there now. <laughs> I want to solve this problem. This is just ridiculous. I cannot have this thing keep on freezing up all the time. This is not going. It's only I'm using my video camera to do streaming, right? So when I've got that camera view. Which shows what I'm recording. Rec recording will be fine. That's okay. And what I'm monitoring on the other monitor, like I've got a monitor set up to it, which shows you what I'm looking at, what the camera can see. That's fine. But when it's going through the conversion stuff and going into OBS, OBS isn't like it cutting out and coming back on again. I'm standing inside a shot, I'm just like, yeah. so I'm still here, it's not frozen. Oh man. This is frustrating. Anyway, it's uh, now I've deoxed it. Maybe it'll make some difference. Stop it from cutting out. And I've had this camera for about three years now. I think three, four years, three years. Well, maybe it's four. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, frustrating. Let's turn it back on so it goes bang. Change views. OBS has gone new. Let me fix this view. Hold on. I'm still here. Don't worry. got to reselect it because it's got messed up. Here we go. We're back. Blame OBS. Well, there is an issue with the cams glitching, so I'm all, now I'm wobbling the connector around and it's not glitching. Okay. That's looking good now. So I think doing the um, deoxy on the connectors and on the like a like a um, mini HDMI connector. It's got on the side of the camera there. That seems to have solved it. It's not playing up at all again now. So that's good. Well, I don't know. Well, fortunately, my bench setup here is a bit crowded. <laughs> it's not easy for me to see everything and especially when I'm trying to work on something I'm looking at what I, my camera can see on my monitor which is used for that but um, basically I've got an HDMI splitter the camera's not overheating it's just a bad connection because what happens is um, if I knock the cable with my leg or something like that it's moving the connector around and it's making it cut out and I actually see my screen flicker 
or if I wasn't looking at the screen, I wouldn't see a flicker. But it would hit. But my monitor here keeps going. The monitor's fine. But what's happening is OBS isn't like an interruption. It's obviously messing up its video stream and, and it's confusing OBS. And then OBS freezes up and says, "Nope, I'm not looking at it anymore." So um, yes, that's frustrating. Anyway, it seems better now. I'm wiggling, wiggling the cable around. It's not playing up. So I think I've solved that. So I hope that's the last time that happens. But it's damn irritating. Anyway, that's what we're doing. We're supposed to be working on this thing. Let's get my rimmer. And while I'm over here, I'll get a cable gland. Cable gland, reamer. Okay. Ah, oh, of course, the transformers in a way. Well, this isn't irritating at all. <laughs> uh, the transformer off to get the reamer in there. I'd have to take the transformer right off to get the reamer in there. Ah, oh, bugger it. Well, I'm guessing I'm going to get some drills then. Because the reamer can't get in there. Not by long shot. I think I've got a drill for that. Where's my cable gone? Just make sure that the right size gland first. It's got this on the end of it, which is I'm gonna have to cut off. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut that off. That's all right. Gland. That will probably go. That looks correct to me. So, I need to get a drill which will be this size, whatever size that's going to be. I have to ignore the flats. Let's measure this. I think it's about 13mm, I think, so not normally. I think that's what they are. 15. Uh, squash down 14. Squash right down is there. Yeah, I think it must be 30 more wide, is it? 30.5 wide, yeah. I think the biggest shoot I've got is 13. This could be fun. Send it off, give it that noise, don't need it on now. Alright. That's not good. Maybe I need like a stubby reamer. I need like a reamer with... Actually, I don't have a drill bit. Step drill bit somewhere. I think I've got a step drill. That might do it. Where are they? That's always the question. Where did I put them? I've got some somewhere, I'm not sure where they are. I did buy some. Not in there. Not in there. Might be in the garage. Not there. Okay, I'm going to go out to the garage, go and get my drill, and hopefully the drill which I want to use on it. So bear with me, don't go anywhere. Wash back very shortly.
Okay, I'm back. Drill. Screen not frozen. Set drill. Big drill, not sure what size it is. Because I've machined this one down so I can actually fit in my drill. So let's actually measure it. That's twelve and a half mil. So that's close. I've got step drills in here. But I don't know if I can get in with that. That's hitting transform as well, so I can't use that. Well that's annoying. So I can't use step drills. I've got a choice of this. <laughs> choice of one. I need to get a better drill selection. Okay. I'll see drills in a mail bag in the near future. See, I've got a bunch of these step drills, I've got some more of these, and like ground the end off and have like some stubby ones and have a selection that way I could potentially get that way. I don't know, maybe. It's an option, isn't it? So this is 13 mil, so it's not quite the right size, but it's closer. And let's see what we can do. Now, I must not go right through and, and stab it into the transformer, because that would be bad. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, there we go. That's it. That's what I've got, because it must be 30 mil wide. The other way. Oh. Oh, well. Let's do it. I'm not liking this wobbling around there. I try not to go too fast because there's lots of chips flying everywhere. Alright. How close are you already? Probably long miles off. Still got heaps to go. Yes, I was trying to actually make it oval as well, because these are oval. So I was trying to basically put it in sideways, that's the plan. Hasn't frozen, has it? No, it's still going. Cool. Yes, I know it's a bit of a bodge, but it'll work. It's fine. <laughs> Don't judge. <laughs> the other thing I've got is a reamer. Let's try that. Uh, where is it? It's in here, I think. This well, it's like a deburring tool. This actually takes a, bit, a fair bit off, so I might just have to use this to do the final sizing. It's a good thing about being aluminium. It will actually, or well, aluminium, depending which country you're in. But it's like a little shave at a time, which is really not really that great. Yeah, anyway, um, yeah, this is going to be messy. It's usually when I get uh, aluminium splinters as well. But you know, we'll possibly go wrong. Let's check the chat. Okay. Yeah, I could have unboxed the transformer. If I get this bit, I'll do that. Quite a bit to go, I think. 
Yep, still quite a bit to go. Probably this way is you tend to get a slot which will it tends to go sideways if you're trying to like pull downwards it will tend to go off and I think that's what's happening here right now quite a lot because we're using quite a big bit so I'm not really happy about doing it this way maybe it would have been easier to touch that all off <laughs> Oh, no, you got blind. No. It's okay. Camera went to sleep. It's fine. Okay, I'm getting really close. So next time I say, I'm not going to take transformer around because it's too hard. Tommy, Scott, what the fuck are you thinking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's almost in there. Okay, we're just about there. Okay, I'll go through now. We're going to stop this disaster. Let's get these conductive shavings out of the way. That drill is, um, I was drilling from the side, not the tip, right? So side drilling, which isn't great. Not really meant for that. And um, it's a New Zealand sourced part. It's not from China. Well, it probably was from China, but I bought it from a New Zealand hybrid store. So, hmm. Dremel, yeah, I've got a Dremel. This is also an option. I should have thought about that too. Should have thought about a Dremel, but that's tucked away as well. Right. Anyway, the cable gland goes in now, so we can carry on. So, I'll cut this off.
Come on, come in. This does not want to split very nicely, this one. Here we go. So, Should be plenty, more than enough. So how's this thing wired up? Because that's the next thing we need to look at as well is the um, wiring for this transformer, which needs to change. So I've got a connection here which goes through to the fuse. There's actually a bit of phase coming in, presumably. Um, it comes up to the switch, which is what's the main power switch there. Which then comes through to the transformer windings, which come back. So those two transformer windings are linked together. So I see parallel windings, and these are parallel windings, so I need to put these in series as per the manual. So I can wire this in and then sort that out. Okay. Let me strip the end of these wires off before I get trapped in there. Right, I've got the uh, hand. Oh, start again. I've got the hole opened up now for the gland. So the gland will go through. I've got to put these wires on. Actually, before I put these wires on, I need to do something. I need to put these through the casing. But first, I need to fix the casing because the casing is dented. So I'm almost ready to put the wires on. I'm a bit premature here. Nobody wants that. And. Dropping a molten solder on the disc. At least not on the floor, on the carpet, which is always a bad thing. Okay. Okay, so I won't put that on just yet, because once I put this on, I can't get the casing under the waist, because there's, the hole in the casing is not big enough for the plug. It's the problem with these. So I need to change that casing first because I need to take the dents out of it. Take the dents out of the casing, then I can put the wire on. Okay. At least I realised before I put the wire on. Just make some space around here. It's getting a bit messy and crowded. So you fix the casing. So you need a hammer. Check, check. Hmm. 
No work here. <laughs> it put, would have been easier to take the transformer out. <laughs> Probably what I should have done. That's what you get for being lazy, I suppose. So, we've got to fix this. Take this den out of this. I need somebody to do this, we'll be able to take the handle off. You have a dent in it? Yeah, it's just slightly warped around the front here. This is bent here. So, I need to straighten all this out. So, let's get this handle off first. So, I'll take this handle off so I can straighten the chassis out. Hopefully, I can get in there with this flat blade. Looks like I can. Which is slipping off though. It's not really the right size screwdriver for this. That one's going. It's got a uh, flat on the, inside the uh, hexagonal there. So it is kind of going. I think it's because it's slightly bent, twisted, and stuff. Okay, it's going slightly better now. Come on. Seems to be poking a bit if I get it off one side, interestingly. Anyway, that's that loose. Here's the handle. And now you've got to flatten this out without flattening all these ribs at the same time. Okay. I need a smallish flat surface to do this on. Hmm. Hmm. That bends easy, that's good. Maybe I don't have to worry about it so much after all. Alright. I know it's going to sound awful through the microphone. Should I sit on that? Should I have said something like, mind your ears or something like that? <laughs> Probably. So I bought these hammers. Good for things like this. Almost this is quite badly twisted up. So I'm trying to get this to uh, form nicely is going to be a pain. Something to rest this on. This will do.
get in there. It's flatter. <laughs> it's not flat, but it's flatter. So is the camera frozen up yet? So you getting there. The fact it's bending easy is actually working against me. It's not really enough resistance to stop it deforming in places I'm not trying to hammer. Right. It's close, I suppose. Flat edge. That's flat. That's not flat. That's flattish. That's not flat. Just a real up, who cares? I know it's going to sound awful, wasn't it? Yeah, that's slightly better. Okay, now it's too much out of the way. Right. It just keeps popping back in. Am I being too fussy? Yeah, probably. It's not bad. It's actually flat there. It's almost there. It's a shame about the paintwork though. Paintwork would have been nice to keep. Unfortunately, it's cracked. So, no, it's always, paint was already peeling off here, unfortunately. Yeah, better. Okay. I think these need to be pulled up slightly. And I've been too, way too fussy here, yeah, probably. Right, it's at least flat now. And I think it is still slightly off square. I think I need to do something about that. This corner here is a bit curved around. And this one's faced that way, so I need to kind of straighten it up. It's marginally better. I reckon that'll be good enough. I reckon that's good enough. Okay, that was noisy and uh, time consuming. Chit chat, see if everyone's still here. <laughs> uh, could that bash it? The way for the paint to dry. No, I'm not, I'm not painting it. It's going to stay as it is. I'm not going to paint it. Okay. So now I get the wire, fit that through.
Then we can do the wiring. I suppose this, this is the advantage of having a really long wire is that now I can put the casing out, well out of the way. Actually, I should put the handle back on before I forget, shouldn't I? And it goes on the other side. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay. Oh no, I've dropped on the floor. Come on, get in. Trying to get to use his original threads. Here we are. Move this out of the way. Put the cable through the correct way around. Does it go from the outside to the inside, not the inside to the outside? That'd be the next disaster, wouldn't it? Okay. Wires. So I don't like to put spare cable, so there's plenty of slack. So I actually want to kind of put this in and loop it. So it's something like that. That way, if it does get tugged, it's got a bit of chance before. It pulls on the connections. I mean, really, technically, sure, so I make the earth wire longer, so that's the last one that pulls off, but I think it's going to be fine, in reality. I'll put the gland on afterwards. Yes, because I can almost tweak that. So, let's put fresh solder on these. Mainly put flux on as well, see so it goes. We call this too, shouldn't I? So I'm just going to put the cable on. I've already done the chassis straightening up there. That's a lot straighter than it was before. It's still not wonderful, but it's good enough. It's pretty close. So now it's going to be fresh solder on these connections. So when I put the cables on, I've got a nice fresh joint to go onto. I'm not trying to battle the old oxidization and stuff like that. So this is all good to start with now. Then I'll just put the wire through and just let go, and it's done. So I've got to rewire this transformer, which I'll do afterwards. I'm going to put these connections on first, and I can do the transformer. Um, so I need to make sure I get the, connect, the correct connections. So there's also a spare tab here, which I think is what's supposed to be used for rewiring a transformer. So you can put those in series instead. Um, somehow, I've got to figure that bit out yet. But I need to put these on. So we're going to put the live connection first. So I'm going to leave this round so I can get onto it. So my tweezers, we will put them. Do the life first because it's at the bottom, it's the hardest one to get to. It'll be even harder once we've got the other wires in there. There we go. Give a chance to call before I let go. So then we've got the earth in the centre. And the neutral on this side. Band on. A bit of bloody fit after all this. <laughs> I'm going to need some pliers to get this in, I think. Um, I need those big ones. 
smaller so I'm still waiting for the proper tool for this I really wish it had arrived it would be nice you might I do what we got this is gonna be awkward there we go do it this way not push too hard because damage the front panel Come on, get in. Okay, gland is in. Give it a yank. Yeah, that's good. Happy with that. Well, happy ish. <laughs> that I wouldn't say happy. Anyway, it's on. This rewires transformer. Chit chat. <laughs> so I need to figure out the wiring for that transformer now. I just had it was 24, wasn't it? Oh, look at this. It's had to cut the wires off. Why on earth would you do that? I didn't do that. <laughs> mm. That would have been awkward. Okay, so so it's a diagram of the lug, doesn't, does it? That would have been easy by doing it. Well, I can't do. There we go. But that's the other version. This is how it is wired up. So we do have black and red and black and yellow going to there. That's correct. So I need to change that. Uh, right. Connect the black lead to terminal 2, red to terminal 2, so black and red go in series together, and then black green to terminal 1, switch, so black goes to switch, yes, right, so black. I like two of the switch. Let's check this. So, yes, we have black wire going to the switch. So that is correct. They've also got the black and green going to the switch as well. So I need to move the black and green. And 
and black and yellow together. So black, green, black, yellow are in series on the own strip and the red Okay, I thought you used the correct terminals on the strip though. Let's check that. So it's like red should be the output, green and yellow should be the intermediary winding connection. And those are shown here. So make sure I've got the correct connections here, making sure. One on use, two, three is that link. And terminal, yeah. So, okay, so two is the in. That's the link connection. Okay, it's my smart and Oh, I'm guessing. Um, I don't know, maybe. Right, so I think we're right there. So all I've got to do is get that green wire, which is going to the front switch, and move the yellow wire, and put them on terminal one. Right, easy. Point from a hive and a point one were suspicious. Yeah, maybe. Um, we'll find if they go bang and I'll turn it on. I mean, the only way to find out really is to disconnect them, mate. I could do that. I could disconnect those capacitors. And, um, give it a wire. God. Um, yeah, I could disconnect those capacitors and actually measure them. You're going down to this terminal strip down here. I could just cut. Both going down to ground at that end. We go to the chassis, I should say. Really, I don't know. Chassis ground. I, don't know. I probably could disconnect those and um, recheck. Just to be absolutely sure, there's no leakage on them. I could do that easily. Anyway, uh, right. Change camera views again. So what I've got to do now is rewire this transformer. So the green and black, which comes up to this here to the switch, which is obviously this is at 120 volts existing. Um, that's what we come down here to terminal one. The red wire can stay where it is on that middle terminal, on that terminal two. And this black and red, sorry, black and yellow, has to come over to terminal one. So the black and green and the black and yellow are connected together as a loop. So the red is the is the phase input, and um, the switch side is the other side. Isn't that right? So phase is that side. No, sorry, that's the connection for the neutral. Neutral connection is that side. So that's neutral in his in this side. Phase through the fuse and up to the switch through this wire here so um, that's fine so all you got to do is cut the green wire from this end bring it down and the same for the yellow bring this one over there's not a lot of slack there so it could be interesting but it should be enough hopefully let me joining wires together so let's get this one cut it off keep the wire as long as I can Trying to get in there. There we go. So, yeah, that reaches fine. I'm going to do the same thing with the yellow one. Look at that as long as I can as well. So, as much wire to play with as possible. Right. There we go. I say I've got just enough on there to reach, see? I've got to kind of overlap it a little bit, I think. See? I'm about this. Like that. So I'll strip this off here. And this is a fabric. So I'm not quite sure where this is going to go. I'm have to run around it. Hmm. Yes, run around it with a knife. Nice. 
Yep, here's the wire. There's a nice couple of strands out of the way. There's one wire. I'm not pushing very hard, I'm just trying to cut through the fabric a little bit. That's what I'm trying to do. There we go. Alright. Now this terminal lug has been sitting here for a long time. So I should definitely put some flux on this. I don't think I've got enough wire to wrap the yellow one around. I don't think that's possible. So just make do with that one. I have to kind of wrap it a little bit, I suppose. I can just get a little bit on there. Right, let's put some flux on it. Oh, yuck. No, sorry, my fingers. No, I'm not do. <laughs> this tube's still leaking. So over the outside, that bit on the end. Right. Here we go. I don't like how much solder is going to one side of it. What's on the other side? Here we go. That's better. Nice that's flow. Should better try it in a minute. See if it goes bang. How much wire have we got on there? I've got enough to re join them. I do. Let's cut both these caps off and we shall measure them individually, like this. So that's what I measure these capacitors. I was not completely convinced these capacitors are okay because I was getting leakage in circuit. So I've disconnected them from the chassis connection. I'm just doing a DC resistance measurement. See if I get any kind of connection between this cap and... Yeah, see I've got a little bit then, but that could be nothing. Okay, nothing really showing up there. Okay, let's check the other one. It's got a little bit going on, but DC, it's looking kind of okay. That initial charge up, then it disappeared. So DC resistance isn't looking too bad. Um, actually, let's measure capacitance with this. Let's see what this says. It says I've got the thing here anyway. Point 
one. Yep, 100 nanofarad. That's exactly what it's supposed to be. Let's check the other one. 0.5. That's what's supposed to be as well. So that's fine. Let's check it with a capacitor tester. Just to be absolutely sure. Although I'm not sure what this will think of them. Passout tester says 16.5 ohms ESR. Hmm. This is really meant for electrolytics, so I'm not quite sure if it's valid or not. This one says 2.5 ESR, but also gave it capacitance. So, uh, DC resistance is the main thing, I think. So, DC leakage doesn't seem to be an issue, but then it's going to chassis anyway, so. I think we're alright. I, mean, I could do a high voltage chest on it, I suppose, but uh, yeah, I think I'm satisfied. It's probably okay for now. I may change them later on. For the time being, I'll live with it. Put it back on again. Reconnected. I think we can power this out. As I've got anything silly, might even come forward a bit. So the casing will fit back on. I just want to see if it will fit. I'm going to take it back off again. Yep, that goes on much nicer now. At the top. And the bottom. Yep, that's going on much nicer. That's a better fit now. The forward is really hard to get back on and off. So that's good. Happy with the casing. Now, the reason I want to have the casing off whilst I'm doing this testing because I want to see if something goes bang or anything glows or you know any smoke comes out. I want to see where it comes from. Check the check as well. So, when I first power it up, I'll check the um, state of everything here. Leakage, got on discharge. Okay, voltage right down. Oh, I've got to clean the switches, yeah, haven't I? Got to clean the switches. Plug this again for a trip and LCD. Um, I'm going to use the tougher deoxid for that rather than the gold one. I know this will probably need it. It's probably not ideal getting it on the uh, wafers themselves.
switch down here. Two sides, we'll try and get both sides. Two pots on the lube cut as well. This isn't the right one for that, I need to change that. Now these are not sealed, there's actually a bit of a gap in the back there. I'll check the chat again in a minute before we power it up. Check the chat, then I'll power it up and see if it goes bang. It might do now, got what's the oxygen in it. Oh, oh for fuck's sake. Do it, do it, do it again. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh dear. I am failing as a YouTuber. I don't believe it. I think I need a holiday. Too many videos. Too many bloody videos. Unbelievable. God damn it. Well, at least when I do publish the video on this, then you'll get to see it all. Because I'm recording the video. <laughs> Two videos a day, yeah, definitely. Ah, oh, dear. Unbelievable. I don't believe I did that again. Okay, I think I need to get my automatic switcher working again. What do you reckon? So when I go over there, all my switches views. I need to get that working again, because I keep screwing this up. This isn't good. It's about the text. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, the recording will be fine. Maybe a bit boring, but <laughs> that's the I don't know. Unbelievable. I can't believe I did that again. I was going to say, oh, is it cut out again? And I realised, oh no, I didn't actually change the views. Who have you there? I've got all these camera views. 
All I've got to do is remember to turn one of them on. Maybe I should do this view. Right, if I did this view instead. You know, then you get something. <laughs> With the depth view, you get the other one. And this is what I should do is stick it on this view and leave it on this view. Is that the solution? I almost never use this view. A few more sound effects of the camera. <laughs> that would have been a good one for the hammering, actually, for hammering the casing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's power this thing up and see what happens. This, this could be interesting. Bear in mind, I don't know how to use this thing yet. I've got a really vague idea. I don't actually know yet. And I know you can see me. Here, look. See me twice. <laughs> I'm going to leave it on that view. I think it's safer. Oh my god. I don't believe I did that again. How many times have I been done live streams? How many times have I done live streams? I know how to use a camera. I know how to use a switcher. Okay, power switch. Oh, I'm done power switches. I'm done any switches. No, no. I should do that, shouldn't I? They're bound to be dirty. Won't take much. These are the ones to go bang. What do you reckon the chances are of this switch game pop when I turn the power on? <laughs> okay. Let's spin this around. So, if I've got two camera views there, you can see both sides. Look at that. Even better for you. Right, lift this up a bit. So, I've cleaned the switches up, um, I've got power, well, ready to go, I haven't powered it up yet, this will be the first time I've powered it up. So, there could be magic smoke, there could be explosions, there could be things catching fire, we don't know yet. Um, there's only one way to find out, and that's to turn it on. This is always the nervous bit. So, I've got the control set that 3 volts, wherever it's low, sitting is on voltage, discharge mode, power switches off, capacitance central. Um, other one, I don't know what the capacitance fairly testing stuff is. I'm playing with those. I don't know what it's supposed to be set to. Um, internal generator or gen internal. I don't know what it's for. Internal power supply. I'm guessing that means. So I think we're ready to try turning this on. I should have my meter here at the ready actually, because I'm probably going to need to check some voltages pretty quickly. And I should probably refer to the circuit diagrams actually before I do that to make sure I'm testing things which may blow up if they're overpowered. Let me do that. Circuit diagram, which was well, I don't know, one of the pages. I think it's got voltage markings on there, doesn't it? Two hundred volts off those resistors. Okay, and six point three volts across the valves between one and something and yeah, okay. I should have measured six point three volts across those somewhere. I 
I need to look at it in more detail first before I power it up. Two hundred volts in that eye. Right. That's a small transformer. Um. Okay. Let's try to figure out where I need to measure stuff. Then I can power it up and test it whilst it's powered without going off and on too much. So if I find R41, R42, 3 and 4 of those parallel series sets on the side, I think I know which ones those are. I think, I think it's those. Okay, I think I know where those two are. Let me find them. Hold on, then I can do that. Oh, it's above there, isn't it? I think it's those two here. It's probably really small on the screen now. I've got to sit on a four ways set up. It's cut off. I can't see it. <laughs> oh, I think a different manual. Give me a second. We need it there, people. I need to make sure I know where to measure. This is a circuit diagram. This one doesn't show the assembly part. I've only got one that shows the assembly. Maybe. I've only got one that shows the assembly. Damn it. And the markings are cut off. I can't see what they are. They haven't done a good overlap on the scan. I think it's them here. So that's valve one. And that's pin three, is it? Seven. That must be pin one. Three, four, five, six, seven. I can see some numbers here. So, okay. So that'd be on seven and eight of valve one. Is that enough for me to figure this out? Seven and eight, there we go. Yep, that is those two. So I've got to measure 6.3 volts across into those resistors. Great. Right, we can do some stuff. Right, let's do it. And that is AC volts, not DC. I need to be on AC. So I need to measure across those two there. And um, up here, that arrangement of resistors, which are kind of serious parallel arrangement. How are these done? That's a serious point there. So that side there. And... Across 
R5, it looks like, is the one I really want. It's at 33, which would be... This one. One end of resistors, other end of resistors. I think that's a negative. No, it's not. I'm not sure where I'm testing here. I think I need to go if I go negative side of the capacitors which should be this one negative side of the caps I'll turn this around so we can see so I go negative side of the cap here To here, I think that should be where I get 200 volts, and there to there, I'll get 600, and there to there, I'll get 6.3. Those would be DC though, wouldn't they? Because it's after that valve, which would be DC rectifier. So V1 is DC rectifier, okay, right? So yeah, there. To here will be 600 and from here to here should be 200 DC then AC down here I'm gonna do the AC one first right so I think I figured out what I need to test of course these two here should be 6.3 volts I believe and from that point near to this point here should be about 600 volts and then from that point near to this point here I think should be about 200 volts. Those are DC, that's AC. I'm going to test this one first. But it could still all explode and go to you know, smoke and stuff before we do that. So I'm going to zoom out a bit first in case something does explode and smoke. And let's turn the power on. So that's power going to the unit. No current draw yet, that's a good sign because the switch isn't turned on. Let's turn on the switch. Switch is on, it's drawing. 40 watts, it's dropping down, 22 watts, gradually dropping, okay, let's measure some voltage on here, again, 6 volts AC, good enough, DC, let's go from here to here, should be about 600, looks like it's charging up, obviously as the valve's warming up, okay, about 570 there, I'm doing 220 watts right now, so 220 volt input. AC, so it's going to be a bit low. So that's 570 there. And I think this should be about 200. Well, enough in there. So maybe I'm measuring that wrong. Maybe it's here. No, I don't think that's right. There's one other thing I'm not sure about here. Anyway. Um, yeah, so we've got 600 there. Let's put the voltage up a little bit to, say, 230. And those voltages should come up slightly more. So back to AC, measure across here again. Careful where I'm sticking my fingers. There you are, 6.2 volts, that's perfect. And back to the AC again, over here, on these ones. And that is 600. That's fine. So, that's right, I've just got to check that 200 volt output though. I'm not sure where that is. I need to find that. Let's turn this back off again for now. Where's that 200 volt output? Am I reading that wrong? So it's going to chassis, so I should be measure from chassis to one of those resistors. Or is it 200? Um, oh, no, it's 200 volt, there we go, it's 200 volt there. So I should measure from chassis to one of those resistors and get 200 volts. Of course, 600 comes up before that. Let's just do that, shall we?
there's a plug-in based on activity, is there really? Oh, okay. Can you email me that, Ian, if you know exactly what it is? Because I think I need it. <laughs> Alright. So, there's 200 volts from the chassis, which is this end here, to one of these resistors somewhere. So that's series parallel, that's a series junction, that's a parallel junction on the positive side, that's across that capacitor, that comes across to here, that's across that capacitor. I really thought it would be this one. Now let's measure it again. This won't go from the chassis anywhere. Maybe I'll just probe somewhere else on the chassis where it's a bit safer. Just to get up there. Is it here? Yep, that's coming up. Is it there? Nothing. That end. 200 volts. There we go, 200 volts at that end. Okay. So I've got 200 volts at that end and nothing at this end. That doesn't seem right, does it? Smooth this meter out of the way. Smooth this around. So we've got it powered up again, and this point here also goes to the chassis, so I can actually measure it anywhere on the chassis, really, as a reference point. Which I'm gonna do because it's safer, so it's sticking my probes in there. So here we've got the 600 volts, which is fine. And we've got this junction here, I'm getting 200 volts there, which is A voltage I'm expecting. And this resistor comes over here to these trimmers. But I've got absolutely nothing there. That doesn't quite seem right to me. I really wouldn't have thought that I'd have a 200 volt drop across this resistor here. And that's supposed to be a 33k. Either there's a short on the output of that, or this resistor isn't really right. And if I measure across it, there's 200 volts across it. This doesn't seem right to me. Ah, hold on. No, I'm talking crap. Because that's a tab to ground. That is a chassis tab which is attached to. So that, that's absolutely fine. That's exactly right then. Okay. Worrying about nothing. That's probably fine. So the voltages look good. Um, we do have a glowing eye. Let's try and get this. Yeah, it's kind of focused that. Right. Turn some lights off so I can see it. It's glowing, but it's not very bright. Yeah. That eye doesn't look good. Although my lighting's affecting it as well. See, that's the shadow from my other light. Okay. So I'll turn my lights off to try and see the magic eye. It's not very bright, this one. They don't tend to be very bright anyway, but this one's looking particularly dim. Um, let's see if we can get any kind of activity out of this. I need to put a capacitor on this. In fact, before then, I'm going to measure the output this voltage to make sure the output voltage looks okay. It's going to be grainy. I'm sorry about that because I've got the lights off. So, the test connections are over here. So, I'm going to stick these probes in here, like that. We'll put it onto leakage. Set of 3 volts, and we're getting 2. Point. Oh, look, we're getting 3 volts. Six. 
Get these connections better. Connections aren't great. 5.6. So 10 is 9.6. Fifteen is almost fifteen. Twenty-five is twenty-six. Fifty is forty-eight. One hundred is ninety-nine. One fifty is one fifty-one. Two hundred is two hundred. Bang on. Two fifty is almost two fifty. Three hundred is basically bang on. Three fifty. A couple of volts down. Four hundred is bang on. Is that four fifty? Can't see from here. Yep, 450. That's 5 volts high, slightly higher end. 500 is almost bang on. 600 is almost bang on. Excellent. So the actual output voltages are looking really good. Certainly close enough for me to be happy with. So um, that's good. This charge has gone to zero. Excellent. get some leads to put a capacitor on this. Be careful where I stick my hands. Ten microfarad. I'm not sure what the ranges are on this thing. Have to figure that out. I put up a ten microfarad cat, which is rated at. I should measure that. The uh, four hundred fifty volts. So I can't go too wrong with that. So we'll do a leakage test on that. I don't know if you saw it, but the eye closed up and then it opened again. Let's get closer. Nice to open again. So it should open as it charges up. Yep. The tube is very slightly turned, I think. It should open. It's only at 25 volts. Maybe something else going on here. I'm trying to put a higher voltage in and see what that does for it. There we go. Now drop down. Now it's open. Okay. It's just taking a bit longer to get there. Come on, you can do it. So this will probably need catabrain as well. It's got adjustments on the side, which I'll have to look at. That's not opening, it's higher, is it? If I go up and down, then it opens. I'm not sure that's right. So there may be something else going on here, which I don't know about yet. May need alignment. It's possible this needs alignment. Could be that's why it doesn't open. The lines are wrong. It's possible. Okay, let's look at something else. Um, mind you, I should put it on electrolytic. Does that matter? I don't know, maybe. Um, let's try it again. Yeah, there we go. Now I put an electrolytic. has changed it. Okay. This idiot is driving it. That's a problem. There we go. I think it must put more, uh, more current through or something. So, 200 volts. That should open up. Starting to go. Here we are. Yep. Two fifty. Hopefully it opens up. Yep, I can see it's starting to go. I think it starts need a calibration though, it won't be aligned correctly. Yeah, it's opening up now. Let's go 350, let's jump straight to that. 
going to save some time. I'm actually wondering how hot those resistors are getting too. I should get my uh, thermal camera out and see how hot they get. Because we've got that current going through those resistors. Go on, open up. Well, it doesn't at least seem to be working this far. Might be end of the calibration issue there. Might be a point where the alignment's not right, and this means it's not quite right. Those upper end, it's possible. Or oh, this capacitor is leaking. So, okay. Discharge it. Put the voltage back down to a safer level. Now, how do we use this part? Um. I don't know. So, scales, capacitance, in a scale. So this is a, what did I say it was? 10 microfarad. And I think this is a farad scale, I think, I don't know. Well, it's got one, so I put one there, right? It's about there. It's also got... Um, yeah, there's a 10 over here as well, so it might cover two ranges. So is that farads? Times one would be farads. So you need to be down here more. Okay. Well, bridge. And we'll see if we can get anything from there. No, bring around this one. Nothing there. I'm not sure which range supposed to be on. Nothing there. Nothing there. That's one. See nothing happening there. Oh, we've got something there. There we go. So I'm not quite sure what the ranging is on this thing. So there is showing at about 9.2. And it's a 10 microfarad. So I'm guessing this is microfarad scale then. Times 1 be microfarad, not farads. Okay, so now we know. It's a, farad, it's a microfarad scale. Excellent. So that is working. Cool. It's looking nice. Also, I need to adjust that though, but it's working. Yeah, don't forget to put it on discharge. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right, where are we? I've got loads to go here. Right. Spicy volts, yeah. Twenty seven K off thirty three maybe, I don't know. Get it stop yet, I'll figure it out. <laughs> well I'll figure it out, I don't know. Sixty five is a bit dodgy. Is that the sixty five which is the um iTube, is it? Yeah, yeah, okay. I do actually have a spare iTube. I've only got one though. It's definitely very weak, isn't it? 
Oh, I saw cameras working. Excellent. <laughs> it's interesting now that you see the webcam is seeing a lot brighter image than the recording camera. The recording camera has got the um, aperture set down to try and get a better depth of field. Cab is great, maybe. But don't forget, this is not adjusted yet. I've got to go through and check the calibration adjustments on this unit. You put some resistance or something, I think, across it, and you can then tune it that way. And that obviously needs doing. Yeah. There's a video for me. For a start. Yeah, okay. Frank, we under ask. Yeah, I know she's she's had brand new. I know she had one like a new in box or something she built. That's pretty amazing. Not hard to find, not hard to not expensive to replace. Yeah, okay. Council voltage tune up the magic eye. Okay. Caps before that, right? Yeah, I haven't looked at that process too much. I, I did see, I think it was Mr. Carlson's lab. I think he did it. I think I saw him do it. And I thought, okay, that's something to sort of make a mental note about having to do that aspect of it. Obviously, I need to do it on this one and see how accurate it ends up being. Um, let's have a look at the manual. I must mention it, surely. It can't be that much to it. I think it wasn't much to it. Um, this is usage. Probably should have started at the top and worked way down. Anyway, leakage calibration. Here we go. With and without milliamp meter. Oh, yeah. Okay. One hundred K across the test signals. Okay, it shouldn't take much to do, should we? We should just do this. I'm sure we can find hundred K resistor. Do I have to do multiple resistors? I do. Which means using a substitution box might be an option. Ah, oh, mine doesn't go up to that, that level. Okay. The milliometer version is apparently better. Use a variable system to get two milliamps, and then have that so it just closes. All oh, right. Okay. Hmm. What is actually calibrating them? Because if you don't know what the voltage, or it was, if you don't know what the resistance is across it, or is it based purely on leakage current at the voltage? Is that what it is? So you're calibrating the I tube to the leakage current. Okay. So that's doable. Um, I might still resist a method, eh? <laughs> I'll be happy with that. Okay. I might do yellow later on. So 100k. I'm 
big difference is the resistor needs to be. We've only got a quarter watt here. Oh, that's got me the other ones. Get a bigger one. 100k. So let's put this on discharge. He came off those valves. <laughs> Over there. I want to do a thermal check on this area. Read it again. So I've got to do up a bit. Three hundred volts across that resistor. Really? Mm. <laughs> so electrolytic bridge leakage at leakage setting. Adjust the top calibration control. So I've got to try and do some checks on this. Oh, take the thing off. Checking the temperatures inside here. 100 degrees in some spots. Hmm. Those resistors are getting pretty toasty. So 100 degrees, those ones I put in today. They're very hot. Not liking that. Might need big, big resistors for that. I might have to get some bigger ones. No, I should get some 2 watt resistors or something, maybe 5 watts. And swap those out again, some bigger ones, I'm not liking that. And these ones up here in a high voltage supply, they're also pretty toasty. 90 degrees. Yeah, okay. Not liking those ones over there being 100 degrees though, that's really pushing it. Let's check this side. Valve is 160 odd there. The rectifier. Everything else is looking kind of alright though. Yeah. So I'm not liking those resistors over here. I think that's really a lot of stress on those. That's not good. 110 degrees I'm getting there. 112. There's going to be worse ones to put inside the case. So yeah, I think I need to change those again. With some even bigger resistors, something can dissipate a bit more power. But I don't think that's good. Uh, right, the testing. So I've got the resistor over there. These have got some gunk in them, like silicon or something. It's like a silicon sealant in there. Now those were accessible from the other side as well, but this valve is in the way, so it can't get to that. So I have to do it from this side. I'm just hoping the sealant's not going to like places which affect the actual usage of the calibration. Anyway, might find it's fine anyway. So I'm going to try doing this calibration on this thing now. So I've got a 100k resistor across it, set electrolytic mode. I've got to put it in leakage position and a high voltage. Uh, what voltage do I want? I've forgotten. 300 volts. This could be ouchy. Um, 
And apparently I've got to adjust the top adjustment for the eye just closing. Yeah. Yeah, this valve isn't great. It's got a bit of overlap on it as well. This eye tube is not good. Yeah, this eye tube is not good. Okay, I think I didn't replace that tube. I'm going to have to get another one. So I've put it to discharge, which means it should be safe voltages on here again. The resistor is a little bit warm. So the next one's a 1.5 meg. Twenty five volts. Then electric. And just close for the bottom adjustment. What about the middle adjustment? Does it mention that one? Hmm. Alright, so I've got a 1.5 meg in there set to 25 volts, minolytic, put on leakage, and this should be for oh, I just closed and it's almost closed, not quite. So yes, it's definitely in the adjustment. Apparently this is the bottom adjustment. And that's really touchy, I barely touched that and that changed. And this seems to be a little bit dirty actually. Yep, that's done. Yeah, this valve is definitely not good. Alright. position. No, I'm really not step eight here. So just close position. And then three volts. And I've got to do the middle position. Three volts paper. The center one. Okay. Using the same resistor. So using the same resistor, I'm going to go to the paper position, leakage, and then did a middle adjustment for the just closed. And that is not doing anything. That's interesting. Why is that doing nothing? What is happening now is the eye tube brightness is going up and down a little bit. It's flickering a little bit up and down, which is interesting. I think it's to do with the current draw. Yeah, it's because of the current draw. But I can't get that to open or shut. Hold on, I know why. Three volts. That's why. Now we'll do it. There we go, now it works. Had the wrong voltage set. 
and just shutting is about there. Okay, that's calibration's done then. Positives, yes, well done. Signature of not enough current to check the amplifier tube. Things I don't actually have much experience with valve stuff, it's not my thing. I don't normally do them, so I'm kind of um, lacking a lot of knowledge in this area. So that's the rectifier, I know that much. That's the magic eye. It's a tube here. This diagram's off bloody place. Hold on, let's get a different one. This one has a better diagram in it. It's page 11, was it? No? Where is it? There it is. Yeah, the other one had a piece missing at the middle. So. That's the iTube. I don't know what any of these are doing. <laughs> I don't have a clue. Input could be wrong due to leaky cap. So we've got that point 0.1 on the input to the iTube here. Let's go to the bigger view. Super better. There we go. So. There's that point 0.1 microfarad, which would be the last paper caps, I'm sure. That's that one. And there's the point 0.5 here. Those are the two we think may or may not be all right. I'm not sure. So that could be what's causing the iTube to play up, eh? So maybe I'm going to replace those that might change things. I know I've got one of these tubes stashed. I've got a tube which I've never used. I bought it, presumably, new old stock, and um, put it away. And it's sitting in a drawer for 15 years, kind of thing. Um, so I do have one. So I'm not sure about this arrangement here. So we got. Obviously that's a DC supply coming in to power the valve. We were getting 200 volts, so that's okay there. There's a negative side with that capacitor there. So these two have to be from there. So where's that one going? This is going from this switch here. And that's the adjustments for the current. So the drive is coming through these adjustments here from this switch over here, which is something. Um, this is obviously the mode selection switch, which is I don't know which position it's supposed to be in. And the other one is that side, it comes down here. Also goes to that switch. So I don't actually know what that's doing. I'm not sure which position is which, I have to figure that out maybe. That's showing bridge position. So leakage will be two positions over from that. Yeah? Is that right? So that'd be. Can't see those two together, would it? Which then comes over from this tube here. That makes sense, doesn't it? Um.
Yeah, Valve stuff's not my strength. I've done very little Valve work. Like, this is the most I've done on a Valve thing. Did the IT12 last week, and that's the first experience, exploration to it, and this is this week. V2A, V2B, so between these ones, which would be that rail there. Yes, that's pull up, and this is being pulled through here. Is that right? So that's the input to that valve amplified and through here amplified affecting that one. Yeah? Sort of the same valve, isn't it? V2A, B, C, so it's got three segments. Right, so that one there, B3 there. Oh, okay. So is that the paper cap? Not this one. 0.05. I thought the paper cap was 0.5. We have 0.1 and 0.5, so it must be the paper cap, and that's a different one. Um, oh, there was the other cap here, I didn't check, eh? Hey, that other metal film one. Or did I check it? 0.05 metal film, oh yeah, that one there, yeah, okay, I'll see the one now. So if I go to here, there's that black one that's behind that middle switch. That appears to be it. B and C are diodes. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, same symbol as that. So that's a diode symbol for valve, yeah? Right. Maybe. And that's a amplification because it's got a grid. Would that be right? So this will be the signal line in this one. Where does it go? To that switch. Into that power that switch. And down this side, that 1.5 meg from this switch over here. Which is electrolytic and minolytic. Minolytic. Minolytic? minolytic I don't know. Um, from that one, okay. So that's adjusting the current to the grid. Would that be right? Hmm. Yeah, I've done nothing about valves. <laughs> okay. So that resistor there, I did measure as one meg. But if there is leakage on that cap, it could be dragging it down slightly. So whatever voltage it needs here, which is 20 volts it wants there. Could make sure that looks about right as well. Grid terms of base, yeah. It's what uh, causes the um, H on flow. Yeah. I know a tiny bit about valves, almost nothing. <laughs> So I was thinking if that voltage up here is a bit weak, that might cause that to be weak maybe, a second grid. I don't know if that could be related. I'm pretty sure it says 20 volts. This one says 20 volts. So if I check that and see what we get.
Yeah, I definitely want to replace those caps. Um, the smoothing caps, I could do an AC check on them, see how smooth they're coming out after the AC. Although that seems like it's alright. I'm not too worried about the big electrolytics. I'm thinking these paper caps could be a bit weak though. Because when I put my meter across them, I did measure a brief resistance as they kind of charged up. So I'm not completely convinced they're all right. And I know I'm off camera. I know I'm off camera. That's okay. I know I am. <laughs> Power is still turned on. I'm just going to measure for ripple across these caps. One point one volts across one of them, and the second one is also one point one volts. So, across that high voltage, one point one volts across three hundred volts each. Probably not a big deal, is it? So, two point two volts across six hundred volts. Two point three volts. And if I measure the output there with the two hundred volts, is getting point six volts ripple. That's not too bad. I'm fairly happy with that. Yeah. So that's iTube I need to measure. I shall change the camera around. So pin 2, I want to check that one. Should be 20 volts relative to ground. Um, there's a 1 meg. Is it that one? No. That one. See, I'm getting a low voltage here. When I get a voltage. Bloody connections aren't great. Come on. I oh, know you can't see what I'm doing. Let's change hands. Let's stick this somewhere else. <laughs> see, I'm getting 11 volts. That's certainly not the 22 it's supposed to be, is it? Thirteen volts there. We're getting nineteen volts on that one. Maybe it's supposed to be that end. Which end is the capacitor to go to? Capacitor's going to that end, which is the point one. I don't know which pins which is on here. And then we got that wire there's going off somewhere. So the point one's going to that one. So that's probably the wrong pin. It's probably this end, which has got the one meg on it. Uh, what else we got here? Nothing near. And nothing near. And 11 volts there. So the highest voltage I'm seeing is 19. Oh, sorry, that's not right. It's 192. Get it right. So that's the main DC in. So this one here has to be the one which is supposed to be 20 volts. I might get in 11. So yeah, something's striking it down. Should record that. So I'm just looking at the voltages on this iTube to see why it's so dim. And the suspicion is that there's a current drop. I'm talking to a guy in the chat on my live stream who knows a lot more about our stuff than I do. And he thinks it could be getting dragged down. And I'm getting 11 volts here, which I believe should be 22 volts according to the circuit diagram. So that's half what it should be. Um, the main supply rail, DC supply coming in here is 193. should be about 200, so that's okay. And the suspicion is that these two paper caps here may be a bit bad. 
and leaking a little bit. Here's your two and three on valve three. Um, I did when I was going around. I think I saw 19 volts in that, was it? Oh no, not on three, that was on five. What was it? No, maybe it was three. Pretty sure I did see it. It's at minus 8.8 .8 volts here on three. Oh yeah, okay. Right. But that may be under certain conditions though. I don't know what the actual setting should be. But definitely at pin 2 we're getting not the right voltage. So we've got that 1 meg resistor which I was measuring across. We've got 2 on the one side, 11 on the other side. That probably means that resistor isn't doing too well. Or there's current draw from that C11 or the valve which is causing it to drop. Probably C11, isn't it? It's likely C11 is the problem there. Yeah. I might measure that resistor again, that R12. And I'll just see if it still says 1 meg or not. Check for any voltage sitting around there first before I stick the multimeter across it. No voltage. Getting exactly one meg. It's perfect. So, no issue there. Resistor is fine. I think it maybe when it warms up, it will be leaky or something. You know, start going open circuit. But that seems not to be the case. Um, which means it likely is capacitor. And that's supposed to be a point 0.1, which I don't have. I'm just thinking I've got anything anywhere else. Seven, I think is the smallest I've got. It's a four seventy. That's not the right one. No, no, I don't have a suitable one for that. I will have to get some. Yeah, I think I'd replace those caps before I replace the valve in case that was what was causing the problem. Because as I was doing that adjustment, the valve brightness was coming up and down a little bit as I was doing adjustments, so it could be a issue with a cap lighting it down. Um, C11, yeah, that point one.
Yeah, I don't have the right capacitor, David. I've, I've obviously been focusing on all kinds of capacitors. capacitors. I've obviously been focusing on electrolytic capacitors. I should be looking at all these other types as well. These, you know, film caps and poly caps and stuff. Find something to replace them with. There's a point one over here as well. C5. So I should probably look at those two there, that one there, that's that, that black film cap. I should look at those ones. Okay. C3, that rail. That one there. Oh, let's go to this diagram, it's easier. And go to that screen. This is, it looks like E3 there, doesn't it? It's C. It's like an E. <laughs> Alright. Um, minus 4 volts, I think that says, is it? Is that 0.4? So that voltage there is not visible in this diagram, I think. Oh, there we go, 58 is there. So it's 58 volts on that one, which is pin 7, so you've got 220k going to it on valve 2. So Pin 7 should be 58 volts. Let's check that, shall we? C3 is DC blocking capacitor. Ah, oh, okay. Yep. Right. Okay. Change views. So this valve here, so I think this one here, that's the one, two twenty. Black, black, yeah, oh, sorry, black, black. <laughs> red, red, yellow, 220K. Yeah, so this one here is resistor feeding that high voltage through into that valve. So I should measure right there and see what we get then, shouldn't we? Okay, let's do that. warms up obviously so right there hmm that's not 58 volts is it this is 13 volts change modes Now we've got 38 volts with leakage turned on. Let's open circuit this thing. Increase the voltage a bit. Forty six volts. Still forty six volts. Let's change modes. Thirty six. 13. So it does seem to matter which mode it's in for what voltage you're going to get here. 13.
Let's put the capacitor back on it. So there was that 450 volt 10 microfarad. So it chucks the voltage out. Let's chuck 25 volts on it. Yeah, let's look. Okay. Always open. 13 volts. Okay. So if I go to bridge mode and get the either shut. Now get 83 volts with the eye shut. Okay, that's interesting. What's the voltage here? Nothing. No, if I put the other probe on it, it'd be helpful, wouldn't it? 83 volts there. So I can probably try and hold this without slipping off. Let's do that. So if I turn this around. Alright, okay. So I see what it's doing. So depending on where the eye is, the more open the eye is, the lower the voltage is. Okay, good to know. Shall we call that? I suppose I could. So I was measuring just over here on this junction, got this resistor just here vertically. It's going to be closer. That resistor right there, I was measuring here. And just tracking, see about the eye brightness thing, because the eye, eye's not very bright. And the diagram shows about 58 volts on it. And I was trying to figure out why I'm not getting 58 volts, getting something else. And the resistance at this point here, if I stick a probe on this tab, right there, and go to the chassis, that changes with the eye opening amount, or how much current is there. So I can actually see a linear progression of current. And you, I can actually show you, maybe... Um, with the voltage, let me just zoom out slightly, I'll show you. And the eye may not even change. But if I stick the probe on here, stick that probe on there because of the ground point, see the voltage there. Now, as I, I'm on the um, capacitance mode right now, so I'm measuring capacitance so I can control the eye opening using the dial. So, as you can see, as I go, it starts with quite high, it drops down, goes to the lowest point. That's where it's the, the minimum eye opening is, so that's, that's where the eye is the most open. And then I'll keep going in the same direction and it goes back up again. So what the eye opening is showing you is the minimum voltage at that point. Or well, at least that's the reaction of what we're seeing here. So that's the why eye is the most open. We get the minimum voltage. That might be helpful for someone. It's not E3, it's C3. It just looks like an E. It is actually a C. Another diagram you can just about see it's a C. Um, on this one you can see it's a C over here. We cannot make it big enough anyway. Okay. Right. Well, it works. The valve is dim. I think I can't do much more until I get these capacitors replaced. I think I'm going to have to get these caps and replace them all. And then at least then I'll know they're done. I'll get some kind of poly cap or some kind to replace them with those. I'll have to research that a bit more, find out what's the best one to put in there. Maybe Vladimir, you know, what the best ones to put in there. 
Yeah. I mean, it seems that that resistor there looks correct. So, I mean, that resistor's all right. Uh, this one here, that measures fine. So I'm not suspicious about that resistor. And so the other voltage is seen there, and that voltage is perfect. That one's dropped down. And as that's one of the grids, so I think that's probably going to affect the brightness. And those could be dragging down. So, yeah, I think replacing all those, well, those three caps, um, I think it's only those three I have to do. Yeah, I think it's just those three I need to do. And obviously those other resistors, I'll make bigger resistors for that. Because um, I'm happy with the heat they're generating. I think it's too much for them. So I think doing that would be next step. So I have to get those parts in and I can finish this, I think. No poly. What are you using, Vladimir? What do you reckon? So that pin two and pin three. Maybe those voltages change with the loading of that eye as well. So that C3 capacitor. You can measure both ends of that. And on the eye tube, and we'll try changing the um, bridge around, see if we can get a different voltage here by changing the bridge. Ceramic. Change views. Bridge that in there, be more convenient. I think that's the way to go. So, do bridge, measure this end of that capacitor 56 volts, that end of capacitor 2.1 volts, minus 2.1 volts. I change the voltage around the SCS, changing drastically on there, isn't it? On that end. The other end, 100 volts, yeah, it's dropping right down. So 110 by 107 there, you can see. I was going to sneeze in, didn't end up needing to. That's those, and the eye tube. So pin three is this one. There. As I change it around, it's changing drastically as well. Okay, I do the same on pin two, which is the one we were suspicious of before. Alright, okay. There's 100 odd volts there all the time. Is that because the modem in now? So I was only getting 11 volts there before, wasn't I? And in discharge mode, we're getting 11 volts. I should measure pin 3 again in discharge mode. 13 volts. And this into this capacitor. That's C3 cap, 13 volts, minus 0.4. Isn't that what it said? 0.4? I think it said that, didn't it? Yes, it did, minus 0.4. So that's correct in discharge mode. So maybe that what's based on is being in discharge mode. Share minus 0.8 volts on pin one of that valve. 
Okay. Which is pin one. <laughs> so Capacitor is going to pin six, is it? Yeah, pin six. And something else. I don't know which pin's which. So that must be pin six here on that side. So five, four, three, two, one. This could be one here. Obviously not. Six, five, four, three, two, one. That could be right. Five, four, three, two, one. It's the same pin. Hmm. Point four there. Six, five, four, three, two, one. That's one. That should be pin one there. That's thirteen. Oh, maybe it's not pin one. I have no bloody clue. There you go. But if I assume that's pin one, then you've got two pins here which are linked together. So that's not pin six. Pin six is over here. Six, five, four, three. No, five, four, three, two, one. That's pin one. Okay, got it. So that's point. That's pin one over there, which is point nine volts. Pin six over here. Is point 0.4 or minus point 0.4, which is linked over here to pin two, linked together at minus point 0.4. Then pin three is nothing. Pin four, nothing. Pin five, nothing. Six, so pin seven is thirteen. Pin eight, nothing. Pin nine, point one. Okay. So the fact you're getting a minus 0.4, minus 0.8, or 0.9, they're looking okay. Right, so that definitely seems weak up here. So C4. We've got that minus 0.8 on pin 3. But um, what are we getting? We're getting 13, weren't we? Because, yeah, between, between 2 and 4 is where that resistor is. So pin 3, that's what I measured. That's doing 13 volts, not minus 0.8. So where is that coming from? That's coming from this switch. Which leak a switch, so maybe I need to be in a different position on the switch. I don't know, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I've, I really need to go and have lunch and have another coffee and. Think about this some more. Um, but it is working, but the tube is obviously dim. So it could just be a weak tube. So yeah, I think I need to replace those caps and then I that will roll those out and get rid of those caps. And um, do something with those. Yeah, replace those, those three caps here. Replace those three. Although that 0.05 seems to be working fine, doesn't it? Maybe I'll leave that online. I'll just do those two. Hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely suspicious about that point. That one there, minus 0.8. And that 22 there. Suspicious about them. It's also possible that because these are kits, that somebody may have made a mistake assembling it. I 
I might have to do some tracing on this circuitry just to make sure that these things actually go to our places. Yeah. Just in case someone's made a mistake in assembly and put that to one place. Maybe to put a drawn pin on the switch or something. It's possible, isn't it? Although it does seem to function, so maybe that's not a thing. All right. I'm going to call it a day. So thanks for dropping by. Thanks for your help. And uh, obviously I've got a lot to learn about the valves and how these things work. That's been interesting. I've learned a bit today. It's been good. And um, I'll catch you another time. So thanks for dropping by.